Welcome back to another episode of the Falcon Punch Cast. This time we're on episode 11. So we think at this point, considering that every episode we recorded is like two hours or so, we practically have like 20 hours of just me and my good buddy Hamza talking. Oh my god, 20 hours of our voices? Uh, yeah, so you could you could practically listen to us for an entire day. <laughs> Start from, like, if you start from episode one right now, you, we we could be in your ear for like an entire day. So I don't know if anyone has like a long road trip. We have a truck driver as a listener. Oh god, <laughs> there will be there will be a lot of repeating topics then. Like, jeez, I'm telling you, we need to make a bingo card. You know, it definitely. Like, you know, we talk about Spider Man. We talk about dinosaur humans. Oh, oh right, now, that's more your thing, though. Uh, well, also, by the way, yeah, hi, we, I'm, we, we, oh, yes. I'm Darth. <laughs> yes, I'm Darth Messiah, aka Hamza, or the other way around. I don't know. I am the Jigen Daisuke to Shaheen's Lupin Sansei. Yeah. There we go. Okay. See, there we go. That's a better one than <laughs> <laughs> the last episode. I'm running out okay. of like I don't know who are best friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta you gotta look at more like famous duos. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Uh. But yeah, so we've been we, we we've talked a lot, and hopefully we'll continue to talk until you can listen to us for a whole year. <laughs> we'll Oof. see how long that takes to record. That Jeez, one. how 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 many they can listen to all the stupid things we say? Jeez, my god! <laughs> listen, I, I think I've dropped a couple of really good premise ideas. Okay, dinosaur people, I guess, because that's what your dream is. Uh, and what else? Um. <laughs> We'll see, listen, listeners. You could probably prove my point if you listen to the other episodes of the podcast. <laughs> oh, nice plug! Nice plug! Great, great job. <laughs> Give us reviews on Apple Podcasts or whatever the other podcast people say for the listeners to do. Like, like the video, comment, help me with the algorithm. I don't know something. I'm kind of a low tier YouTuber. Please, uh, <laughs> even though I've been on here for ten, years. I've I've slowly realized how bad I am as a as a youtuber in terms of like branding marketing uh just being a presence uh i think last week i started responding to a lot of comments and like i felt really bad because like some of them were like this is like three weeks ago i'm like oh my god it's almost been a month (laughs) Uh, (laughs) i mean to be fair like this this is not your full-time job if it was sure it would be a problem but like you know we have lives outside of this yeah, and then no, I just feel more bad for people that leave me comments on Twitter and YouTube because I, I I practically go on those platforms every day. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just really bad about responding to comments. Uh, like even some of my friends will send me stuff on it. Like my own personal friends will send me stuff on Instagram, and then I notice like a week passed, and then I feel like it's too awkward to respond to it because it's been a week. So then. Another week passes. I'm like, wow, now, but now I feel bad. So, like, I'm in this. Con- I do this to myself a lot. Um, uh, I so- see. I, I'll make it easy for you. Just be like, sorry for the late reply, then respond. That's what I do. See, I, I do that too. But how <laughs> long can I do that before it's like this fucker? Um, <laughs> so, anyways, it's nothing personal, guys. Just in case it, it takes me a while. I'm just really. I don't know. Unless we're like super immediate friends and we're talking on my preferred messaging platform. Of WhatsApp, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of WhatsApp, or maybe even texting. Uh, if it's not either of those two, if it's any other form of social media, I'm super late to respond. I don't know why, but if it's not a WhatsApp or an actual text message I, or a business email, uh, which that has never happened for the channel, but it has happened for me at my actual job. <laughs> I oh. wish I could get a business email from my YouTube. Hey, look, we're um, – I forgot. What's the name of that um, company? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're Figurama Studios, and we're doing a new Devil Man statue. I'm like, fuck yeah, I talk about Devil Man. <laughs> oh, jeez. So, so what you're saying is, if someone tries to respond to you on Threads, you're not going to be there. <laughs> I don't even have Threads. <laughs> yeah. um, you might have see, to get I'm, on that because Twitter's dying. Apparently. See, the thing is, I'll probably be on Twitter till it dies. <laughs> uh, and if Twitter dies, I, I guess I'll make an Instagram account. Um, Oh, not a Threads account? I thought by that point, then you will like give up and like. Okay, I know I'll Threads find. looks confusing, and I don't want to go back on the meta because like I know they're going to force me. It's like, oh yeah, you know we ha- you have. I don't remember my Facebook password. Um, 
And like, I, I tried getting back in one time because like an old friend of mine from high school messaged me. I'm like, what did they say? But of course, the email that I got for it is not going to tell me. Mm. So then I tried signing back in, but like it for the verification, it was my old Dubai phone number, which you know obviously I don't have anymore. So like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, the only way for you to log back in is to get your friends and have them confirm it's you. I'm like. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm done with the metaverse. If I ever get locked out of my Instagram account, it's over for that. <laughs> um, yeah, I deactivated my Facebook account long ago, which I, I tried doing it for some reason it wouldn't let me. And I think also my Instagram was connected to Facebook, so I'm like, oh, well, I'm gonna lose my face oh, my Instagram account. Even though I think now there's a way to do that. Anyways, I don't know. Social media is kind of bullshit. My preferred is uh WhatsApp and YouTube. Um, mm-hmm. well, not really the con- see nowadays. I watch a lot of YouTube on my TV. I'm one of those people, so <laughs> TV I can't really respond to comments. So, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, so let's get to one of the topics that we left over from last podcast that we we didn't get time to talk about, uh, despite us talking for like two and a half hours, uh, which is uh, what Hobbs wanted to bring up, which was like Toy Story lore. Yeah, all right. So I, like I said, I was on a, like a Disney Channel animation binge. So Toy Story has a lot of shorts. They're all really entertaining, really nice. There's, um, you know, one about like this like McDonald's toy, Buzz Lightyear, with like a big ass head. And it's like super small, like replaces Buzz. It's called Small Fry. There's another one about like, um, what do you call What is? Oh, yeah. Ken wants to go on vacation, but like. He, he can't so they make like a Hawaii within like the room of the, the toys and stuff and like make it a vacation for him. That was really fun. So that was really, really cute. But like it made me wonder because there's this one short that really questioned like, okay, how the fuck does like sentience in Toy Story like work? <laughs> so right. there's this one short called, uh, what is it? Oh, wait, hold on. Let me bring up the title. I think it's Toy Story Before the Time or something like that. Hold on. Let me just double check. Uh, yeah, so, like, these shorts are really entertaining and stuff, but, like, they really question, like, okay, like, what is the criteria? Because especially with, you mentioned, like, Toy Story 4, like, Forky, like, wait, is that, is that just, like, like, what is a toy then, if, like, Forky is a toy, and as a game Yeah, because, like, like, because with that logic, Pet Rocks also, I guess, become sentient, because it's a rock with googly eyes. Yeah, yeah, exactly, like, what, like, what the fuck, like, what's the, like, what it, where do we draw the line? <laughs> like, if I mold a piece of, like, Play-Doh into a character, does it gain sentience, or is it just play I think you have to maybe give it eyes? I don't know. <laughs> if I put googly eyes on a dildo, does it become... Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Okay, no, this this is a PG. This is, this is a Christian <laughs> uh, <laughs> podcast. <Okay. laughs> it's me, Dickie. <laughs> Oh, oh God. Uh, so anyway, Toy Story, th- That Time Forgot, right? That's the name of the short. It's like 20 minutes. Right. So the story is, is that Bonnie is going to this uh, friend's house, right? And the friend has Bonnie? like... Oh, the girl um, uh, from Toy Story 4, the one that oh, Bambi the one who gives. inherits. Uh, yeah, who, are, who inherits all the toys, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look at this fake Toy Story fan over here. Like, doesn't even know Bonnie. <laughs> Listen, man. I don't really care about, like, the, the first three movies. She comes in at the end of the, the third movie. Yeah, she comes at the end so, of the third movie, yeah. So, yeah, so like, yeah. Andy's so, toys are collectors. They're not, she, Andy's stupid. He should have saved his toys. They're in perfect condition. He could have sold them or kept them and waited for them to collect value. So that, that's them. actually a premise of one of the shorts. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's the horror movie one. It's called Terror or something, right? Like They go to this, ho- this, this motel. It's raining and stuff. They're watching a horror movie, and it really plays into like Jesse's claustrophobia. Jesse, the cowboy girl, just like... Yeah, okay. I, I know. <laughs> she, she, she was in the second movie. Yeah, the one who was like horny for Buzz, uh, Spanish mode. <laughs> yeah, so this motel manager guy has a lizard that steals toys from the guests, and then he sold sells them online on like their version of eBay. So he captures Woody, puts Woody's picture. He doesn't know how valuable Woody is, they, you know. And every toy is like selling for like a few hundred dollars. Woody comes up, the price comes up as like, oh my god, he's worth like thousands of dollars. Because like, you know, Woody's rare because of Toy Story 2. Uh, so yeah, like that that genuinely is a premise of one of the... <laughs> Wait, did you say a lizard is the one doing this? 
Yeah, his pet lizard. There's a pet like a guana lizard thing. And he's selling toys on the internet. Yeah, like he trained the lizard to go into. Oh, okay. Land. I thought you meant like the lizard was doing all this. Oh no 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 no! I'm the like, hum- oh, that that's whole new lore. <laughs> <laughs> like, the pets are like. No, the, the, man, he, you know. the human trained the lizard to like go get toys from the rooms of like his guests, so they can okay. like grab the toys and then sell them. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, there's a Transformers toy in that uh, as well. So like, yeah. So anyways, we're back to that time for God. So the premise is that Bonnie goes to this friend's house. Um, normally they play to each other with like, you know, their own toys, but the boy got like a new like PlayStation or whatever. So Bonnie and him are playing that and they put the toys in another room. And it was Christmas a couple of days ago. So basically um, the boy got all of this whole like dinosaur set of toys. Like it's all of these dinosaurs that are warriors as well. Uh, they call, I think they're called Dino Warriors or Dino Heroes or something like that. I don't remember the name. So anyways, uh, uh, you know, so it's like Woody, Buzz, uh, Rex, and the other like Triceratops one. Uh, they go and they meet the dinosaur toys and all of them 110% believe they are like the Dino Warriors from the show. Like, and these are like aliens that have come to their planet or whatever, right? Um, and so it makes me wonder, like, okay, so it's it's like the Buzz Lightyear situation. Like Buzz genuinely thought he was a space ranger and stuff. Uh, but then later on, as they're about to kill, like you know the the Toy Story toys, like you know Woody, Buzz, whatever, the children burst into the room, and like the toys by instinct just like stand still and they pl- start playing with them. I'm like, wait, if these toys genuinely believe. Um, they're like you know one hundred percent these dino warriors. Then like why like would they stand still if like a human walks in? Like why would they revert to toy mode? Is it isn't it like because like Woody talks to like that crazy kid Sid um, in the first one? So like it's like it's like you know they have it in their control to like you know turn into a toy and like you know be alive again. So that's question number one. Question number two is like Woody says something there like because. The toys, like the Woody and Buzz and all those people, they think they're role playing. Like, oh, they're playing along. Okay, let's play along and like pretend they're Dino Warriors as well. Then later on, they realize, like, no, 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 they one hundred percent real. They believe that these Dino Warriors, uh, they have never been played with, so they still think they're these like religious Dino Warrior to- uh, things, right? So I'm like, okay, so the rule is that they have to be played with, uh, but then Buzz. Even after Andy played with him for the longest time, still believe he was a space ranger until like basically the end of the movie where like, no, I'm a toy. Like Buzz admits that finally he's a toy. Um, and so that's like another question. Like, okay, so like when, when does it happen? Because like then the, what do you call, what's her name? I forgot the name. The Triceratops uh, dinosaur toy, like shows them the boxes, like one of the characters, like the bo- the boxes they came out of. And it's, it's like, see, you're a toy. And it takes a while for the dinosaur toy to realize, like, oh, my God, I am a toy. Uh, and I'm like, wait. But, like, when you got out of the box, don't you remember getting out of the box and stuff? Or no, like, oh, does the toy not remember? Like, does it gain sentience when it's out of the box? I have so many questions. But, like, in Toy Story 2, mm-hmm. like, when they go to a toy store, aren't there, like, ones that are, like, kind of in the box and they're, like, moving around? I yeah, I think maybe. Also, psychologically, yeah. what does that do to you when you when you realize that you're a toy? I don't like. No, no the, 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 in Toy Story two, oh, they're in, still in boxes and they don't like. You know, we see that whole wall of like Buzz Lightyears, um, and they're like not reacting or doing anything. Uh, only that one Buzz Lightyear that was in the you know promotion case with the new belt and shit. Only that one did. Um, but then all so, the Barbies, so but all the, the Barbies, like the womb. maybe. But, then, but all the Barbies got out and they were playing. Like, what the fuck was up with that then? Like, <laughs> because like a, a couple thoughts started coming into my head. Too, yeah, because like, okay, so like, also if you if you come out of the box and you think you're that character and then you finally yeah. realize you're a toy, mm-hmm. how does that affect you? Cycle like, what if this whole time, oh, we just kept okay, comes so you're a toy, you're like. <laughs> So, so here's the thing. I've noticed like this is consistent throughout all the shorts and all the Toy Story movies. Because in that one, 
about it's called small fry the one about the mcdonald's buzz lightyear toy <laughs> buzz lightyear meets this like mcdonald's toy support group where they're all of these like you know cheap ass toys that are like yeah we're not technically like you know real action figure toys so kids don't care about it so they throw us away after like you know opening the happy meal and shit I'm like oh that's sad and they talk about like you know oh my god i want to get played with i want to get played with so badly and stuff like the, the the need for toys to be played with is like consistent and like it really is like their driving force and what makes them happy and shit right so like even these mcdonald's toys, life force yeah like basically like literally like it's so sad because literally they're like they're like oh, you know what okay we're gonna role play a scenario so buzz you're gonna play the human and then some other toy you're gonna play the toy and buzz is gonna play with you and stuff i'm like okay this is like very weird <laughs> right and then um so buzz like it's like a grappling hook toy thing so it's like oh i can use this to escape so he uses it and the grappling toy was like oh my god that was the best feeling ever i got used i'm like oh wow this is like that, that was kind of sexual but okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, being used. and then the dinosaur toy like once he realizes he's a toy the kid finds him and plays with him a little bit and then the other toy like uh the the triceratops toy who knows he's real uh uh, who knows that their toy is like, oh, how did that feel? It's like, oh my God, that felt amazing. So I'm like, okay, so this is like innate in every toy that like they want to get played with. Um, so I guess like, I don't know, once they f- feel that high of being played with, they're like, oh no, this is like the best thing ever. <laughs> well, I'm also curious hmm. about the ones who think they're like, they're not toys. Like, do they uh, still follow that rule when a human comes into a room, they have the slot moving? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's the thing because like those did. So I'm like, is it just like a knee jerk reaction or is it like reflex? Like, what is it? Was it? Also, is there like a toy log? Because like obviously, you know, Sid got scarred by Woody. Yeah, fucked him over for being like a toy murderer. Even though technically Sid was just being creative and playing with toys. He's I mean, he was he was still playing with them. Yeah, but like, but like, but like, he did ask. He did ask permission from the toys but you're like how would he ask permission he doesn't know because he just thinks exactly object. yeah <laughs> i mean he, he like, technically i mean yeah in the frame of the film he, he's a bad guy but realistically he's just playing a, a different form of play yeah it is, like, it's it's more destructive toys are kind I of an asshole they're trying to like <laughs> be an authority of how a kid plays like look, no, listen you you work for me <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, that brings up that that brings up questions too. That like, okay, like I know, like the okay, they frame it as him being crazy and a bad guy. Like, okay, and I think it's okay, it's bad, and he's like breaking the toys, I guess, because like you know, the toys explode. Like, it literally straps dynamite to one of them. But yeah, like, okay, no. that one's a little fucked up. But the ones where he like created like a, a new toys toy out of them. I don't yeah. like in context of a toy. Yeah, that's kind of horrifying. But to him, I'm like he's making new like. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, what I also wonder, my real question in this world, if there's like rogue <laughs> toys that are basically like child's playing people, like they, they just <laughs> grab a knife and start killing people. Oh, oh Chuck, is there, is there like a toy cancel? Yeah, because like if, if they could scar a kid for life and probably send them to like, you know, mental institution after that, mm-hmm. what is stopping a toy from like committing crimes or murder? <laughs> I guess it's just maybe that innate need to get played with. Maybe that's the one thing that's stopping them. It's like, well, well I want to. Get... trying to stop me from choking them out. Isn't that kind of like play for a toy? Like, if I'm trying to choke someone out and they're like pushing me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but like, no, but it's like, 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 I think that need to, like, for a toy, like, I, I want. I don't context that was I know. But like, if a to- <laughs> but if a kid, like, I need a kid to play with me because I need to get that high or whatever. Uh, because that's what my purpose is, I guess. Uh, How can like, yeah, yeah. Then I guess they can. Maybe that. I think maybe that that need for like a toy to be played with. Maybe that's maybe. the one thing that's stopping them. I guess. I, uh, get, I wonder how like more expensive because you know there's those really expensive toys. But like, like here's the thing toys. that also breaks down because we've seen toys grow out of it, like like Prospector from Toy Story Two. He's like, no, I just want to be put me in a museum. I don't care anymore. True. So it's like, okay, so then, like, if they can learn themselves out of it, then does that, like, you know... Yeah, wasn't it in Toy Story 4, didn't, like, Bo Peep or something? Isn't, like, she living in the wild, basically? Yeah, but she still gets played with from the kids in the playground. I see. 
so yeah, like so it's still like she's like yeah, you just like it's unlimited because like there's a short about her as well. About like you know how she went through. She got she got she changed hands so many times, and people treated her as like a lamp, like a legit like decoration piece. So if a kid wanted to play with her, they couldn't. Like the parents would come in again, put her back, and be like, "No, you can't play with her." Um, she got annoyed, disconnected herself from the lamp, and it, like just put herself as as a toy. Then she's like, "Okay, well, I'm just gonna be like this like roaming toy that any like rogue kid on the playground can play with." Yeah. Which also in reality, especially nowadays after, you know, pandemics and everything, <laughs> I don't think you're going to be played with that much. You're probably going in the trash. Which, yeah, like, when I when they said that in Toy Story 4, I'm like, so like, a kid can like easily just like, you no, know, because a kid with their own toys might be careful with it. But like a rogue kid in the playground, like who knows like how they'll fuck you up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially since we've seen like, you know, in Toy Story 3, that kindergarten house, how crazy to- they are with playing with toys. It's like, oh, yeah. God, yeah. I mean, I know if I saw a toy just sitting in a park, I'd be like, mm, you know what? That thing's probably dirty. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. yeah. Also, what's stopping them from stealing the toy? True. There's that too. Like, like they find like, okay, I found this toy. Look, okay, it's mine now. Nobody's claimed it. Like, I'll, I'm gonna yeah, because I'm pretty sure it. there's some kids that are like, oh, I'll take it home and wash it off. And then like, now yeah. it's all good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, I know like people are like saying this with this and then there's also like the Cars universe. Like how the fuck does that work? But like. <laughs> yeah. Pixar doesn't think about their world building. Bastards. <laughs> I'm still very curious if a toy could just go rogue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. True. I'm just like curious. Like, okay, what are the rules for sentience in this like world? Like. Yeah, that too. What is the rule? Like, also, here's another, here's another inconsistency, right? Because, like, Buzz Lighter gets out of the box. He thinks he's, like, whatever, whatever he is. Like, what's his lore, right? Then there's, um, you know, what do you call it? Uh, shit. What is oh, yeah, the, the dinosaur toys. Like, they definitely believe, like, they're these, like, dinosaur warriors. Woody didn't know what he was until Toy Story 2. Like, his own backstory. So, like... What's the deal with that? Like, why didn't he know what he was? Like, what his lore was and shit. There's that too. Yeah, I don't know how that whole gaining sentience thing works. And yeah. Also, like, yeah, it should, shouldn't shouldn't he know? Like, yeah, I'm a sheriff. I there's Jesse and Bullseye. Like, this is my lore. Uh, also, like, what happens? Because like in the eighties, toys were made before the cartoon. You know, like like there are a lot of toy lines that are made before the cartoons. So, like, how do they know? Like, also like yeah like why is it built into them like okay you know what this is too much like it... <laughs> also like i'm like i'm wondering how like that because because you know like how like a law rated our movies back in the 80s got like toys for some reason yeah yeah for some reason So like a terminator <laughs> toy that <laughs> comes out and it's like i have to kill humans <laughs> um oh yeah right oh, yeah, like, that's oh, da- <laughs> that would be dangerous in this world um <laughs> Yeah, if it's true. not stopped. Also, like, uh, with Transformers, like, if you got, like, Optimus Prime and Megatron, whatever, like, Pixar's version of that would be, would they be, like, constantly fighting? Because, like, once they, or, like, once they realize they're toys, they're, like, don't care anymore. Like, I want to see that. <laughs> yeah, and, like, you know, like, superhero toys, like, for the villains. Right? Oh, yeah, right, yeah, that too. Like, if you get, like, I don't know, Superman and, like, uh, I don't know, uh, Lex Luthor toy. Like, yeah, yeah, would they, like, to constantly try? Would they get the other toys to side with them? And, like, <laughs> I don't know, form an army? Like, is it really, like, a civil war going on inside of a to- toy kid's toy room? civil war. <laughs> I want to be played with. I don't want to be played with. This is a civil war. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I want to see that. Like, that's what I want to see. That would be cool. <laughs> yeah, see, that's the adult reboot we want. Because, like, think- remember that movie? Uh, was it Tiny Soldiers, Little Soldiers? Oh, small Soldiers. I was small about to bring that yeah, up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, in that one, they're like, oh, no, we got to kill these, like, monster toys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's uh, basically how, like, I guess in the Toy Story world, if they didn't just, like, plop down when humans came around. Like, that, that's how it would play out. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think there was, like, a short that was, like, put on YouTube, like, not too long ago that was, like, a, a pr- proposed sequel to Small Soldiers. I haven't seen it yet, but I heard it was good. Yeah, I watched that a lot as a kid. That movie. Yeah. Me too. Even though, like, yeah. thinking about it, I'm like, that's a pretty like scary movie. Yeah, that's a pretty fucked up. Movie. <laughs> Which is weird. I love that movie, but like Child's Play, I saw a scene of it, fucked me up and scarred me as a kid for the longest time. Which, Which one? I don't. 
I don't know which one I saw. Like I remember my mom, my grandma. She was in the same room I was in. She was watching TV. I kind of woke up in the middle of the night. I turned around to see what she's watching. And I guess it's a from a child's play film where like Chucky gets melted and he's trying to grab a kid or something. Oh, that's Ch- that's Ch- that's child's play too. Yeah, yeah. And it like fucking scarred me. And my mom used to have these porcelain dolls. Oh, right. Yeah. And like <laughs> my, I eventually like they scarred me so much. I'm like, you gotta get rid of them. She just you had to throw them out. <laughs> Jeez, what about the puppets though? Because the like, puppets looks like just as scary as porcelain dolls. Well, I remember like I used to watch the Goosebumps TV shows, and like mm. the the slappy uh, episodes used to be the ones that kind of freaked me out the most. Because <laughs> even like in the Goosebumps, Slappy's like, oh, "You're gonna be my slave." I'm like, "Why? Why is this puppet making people into a slave?" <laughs> oh yeah, right. Because like, okay, so here's the fucked up thing. Like, because I'm. 90% sure there's like Chucky toys, right? Based off the child's play movies. Exactly. So in the Toy Story world, does that one go on a killing spree? Because now, now your thing gets like, uh, you know, because again, if we've established like the toys, most of them besides Woody for some reason, when they get out of the box, unless they're played by a human, they think that like their lore is whatever lore they had. So if somebody buys a Chucky toy, you know, gets it out of the box but doesn't play with it yet. So it's just like running around like, and it's like, you know, it's a, it's a serial killer from the movie. Does it act out serial killer tendencies when it's like in real life? Like, what's the... <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. Like, are, are, are there rogue toys? And like, how far yeah. does this go? Like, if, if there's yeah. a dead body, but I put googly eyes on it, does it reanimate? Yeah, yeah, true, true. Maybe. Or does it reanimate? I, I like, like how that's our thing. If we just yeah. put Ghoulias, it's <laughs> because annoying. that's basically what Forky is. Like he doesn't yeah, gain he, a he, like a soul until like I guess he get, gets eyes and shit or something. Yeah. <laughs> See, I want the, like the government to like perform experiments on toys in the Toy Story universe and be like, "Yes, this is our new secret weapon, toys." Because yeah, even Forky, when he was made. He believed he was trash and kept on trying to go for trash cans. Like that was his, that's his lore basically. Cause like, yeah, like technically you are trash. Yeah. Like you got, you get used and then disposed of. Um, so like, <laughs> cause I'm wondering if like, cause I'm pretty sure the CIA has to know the toys are alive. <laughs> So like I'm but wondering then, if they're, if they're doing experiments and adding like little wheels and eyes into guns and be like okay <laughs> this, this, this is the newest weaponry oh jeez yeah and it's like yeah like the, 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 there's a lot of questions about Toy Story though I know Pixar is like why are you thinking about this so much like it's just a kid's move but I'm like I don't know man like you are like inconsistent with your own rules like I don't know because you because like they bring them bring them up themselves. So like I, I'm... yeah, Toy Story. I thought about the premise for a minute. <laughs> God, Eat it's like, Pixar. like even with like that Christopher Nolan movie Tenant. It's like that one joke. Like, wait, do you poop? Does it go back up? Because it's like you know, time's reversing, or like how does that work? <laughs> oh yeah, I never saw that movie all the way through. I never saw it because I'm like, this looks way too confusing. I'm not. I'm never gonna. Watch I, this. I was watching it with my parents because mm-hmm. it came out like I think Max at the time or mm-hmm. HBO Max as it was yeah. back then before mm-hmm. they made that dumbass decision. Um, <laughs> we watched it for 20 minutes, and then my parents were like, "I don't understand what's going on." Also, I think like <laughs> the sound mixing was off. Yeah, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was yeah really people bad. made fun of that. Yeah, yeah. Even in Dunkirk, I had problems hearing what the people were saying. Like, just for some reason, like the music is louder than the uh, yeah. So dialogue. we yeah. Uh, we just wound up watching Godzilla versus King Kong. Oh, how'd they enjoy that? Because that's like a very opposite movie. <laughs> they they enjoyed it. Big monkey um, punch, big lizard. Yeah, yeah. They're they're not too crazy about Godzilla. They know Godzilla was mostly my thing as a kid. Ah, okay. The thing is, I think they listen. They're my parents, so they don't know any better. I think they preferred the the Zilla movie. The Zilla movie? Oh, the the 1998 uh, yeah. like a taxi driver eats fish, like blows, like yeah. not even like Matthew fire. Roderick. Yeah, yeah, Matthew Broderick. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh yeah. 
Because I'm pretty sure for them that was their first introduction to Godzilla. To Godzilla, true, true, true. Yeah, yeah. We had that VHS, and I had like a couple toys for that Godzilla. Man, oh, it would be interesting because like there will be a group of kids that grew up on these like 2014 onwards Godzilla movies. <coughs> yeah, I mean, there, yeah, there's there's gonna be kids that you know got into a lot of nerdy properties from the newest releases. Yeah, yeah, uh, which is, you know is true for everything. Um, <laughs> you know, like every iteration of Ninja Turtles is someone's first Ninja Turtle. Um, yeah, true, true. Every iteration of Transformers is someone's first, I guess. Which is always why it's stupid when like old fans are like, this is not my Turtles. I'm like, yeah, it's not your Turtles. It's <laughs> it. Out of the way, old man. <laughs> it's not but for you. I get... Buy the toys and move on. <laughs> I mean, I get those because like, even for every new iteration, they wanted to like kind of be what the previous one was, like, you know, in a sense. Like, you know, like, you know, for Team Engineer, like we talked about like that franchise episode, like, you know, Donnie has to be Donnie, Raf has to be Raf, right. and stuff like that. So, like, you know, if they make it, like, I don't know, completely different characters and colors, like, that's when, like, the problems start happening. Right, yeah. which yeah. I think was kind of the problem for a lot of people with Rise, because, like, Donatello and Michelangelo were kind of the same, even though I think more modern Michelangelo, he's less into partying, and he's more into, like, social media and memes which i guess is like and kind of a nerd like in at least in the idw ones he's like old oh, manga comic books yeah like, well i guess that kind of ties into being like taking it easy and slacking like yeah i'm just gaming and chilling and yeah oh yeah stuff. i guess yes yeah, yeah. so and then it, it leads to a nice dynamic with him and donatello um in certain mm-hmm. Iterations because I know in Rise they're like obsessed with like a sci fi movie. I forgot what it was called, it was like Mercury Jones or something like that. Uh, they were obsessed with like a sci fi franchise, but even with the new like TMNT, like, see, I like there's certain things that I'm like bothers me. Like, where does Donnie get his glasses? Why does Michelangelo have braces? Like, I know character design wise, like, oh, he's the youngest, so he has braces. Donnie's the smart one, so he has glasses because like Hollywood's that think that's how it works, but but like, where. Yeah. They're like, they're living in the sewer. Where did they get these? <laughs> like, I'm fine giving him goggles like they didn't rise because they're like, oh, okay, he's building stuff, so he has to protect his eyes. But then with mm-hmm. the glasses, I'm like, okay, like, I think that. Yeah, like, really the goggles cool. don't have prescriptions, so, like, it's just goggles, so, like, whatever. Yeah. But, like, to get glasses, you need specific lenses to match your eyes, so, like. <laughs> and then, no yeah. offense, but, like, dude, get contacts if you're going to be a ninja. I'm pretty sure it's very <laughs> for a ninja to be walking around with like a little nerdy ass glass like okay um uh, even in the new transformers when we rise of the beast there's a transformer with glasses why does a transformer have glasses <laughs> like when he what transforms he gets like these like spectacles like it's clearly like, like it's meant to be his glasses like you can find it like search real jack rise of the beast like and it's like he has glasses i'm like why does he have glasses? Why it makes also it's not Wheeljack's design at all. Like Wheeljack is a completely different, like robot. I don't know why they made him like that. Yeah. All right, let me let me look that up because that... yeah. oh, it's Wheeljack. Yeah, Wheeljack. Yeah. Okay, I, I typed in <laughs> real Jack. Oh no no no. Okay, real but Jack. it still works. Yeah, I see his like glasses. Uh, yeah, you see that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a little. I, mean, I guess it kind of works for a robot, but still kind of questionable. No, know. it doesn't work for a robot. Don't try to defend this. <laughs> I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> why would this. he? He has perfect optics. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's a robot. Like, why would he need glasses? Like, I guess you weren't programmed, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, geez. like, I'm still excited for that new Ninja Turtles, even though, like, they, they were, like, hell bent on trying to, like, Oh. Actually, by the time this podcast comes out, this movie's probably out. Yeah, this movie, the uh, movie's probably out. Yeah. Have. <laughs> so, yeah, I, we were discussing it before this podcast went up. I'm like, I don't think the way we've been releasing this in our backlog, I don't think we could talk about too many news topics. Uh, <laughs> just because by the time uh, they come out, uh, it's going to be very long overdue, like a couple weeks to a month away from whenever it happens. <laughs> So, I mean, I don't know. We'll see how that uh, live action trailer uh, podcast does. Yeah. It's like, I mean, in some cases, not everyone's constantly like as in tune with the nerdy news as I am. So who knows? Maybe it will still be new to some people. 
Yeah, maybe, maybe, true, true. Like, yeah, because not everybody follows it, not everybody sees all the trailers, or, like, even cares enough to, like, look it up. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, sometimes I'll be like, oh, yeah, this anime came out, and then, like, I'll have people be like, oh, wait, when did this come out? I'm like, how do you not know it came out? And I'm like, oh, yeah, now everyone's like me, like, checks the anime news before the actual news. <laughs> <laughs> it does a lot better for my mental health. but <laughs> True, 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 true. Uh, yeah, in some ways it's less crazy than actual news. I mean, I live in America, so the actual news is just like constantly beating you down with depression. Right. So, yeah. uh, yeah. it's a lot better to just check out the anime news. No, same with Canada. Like, it's like, uh, oh, the, this person got murdered here, this uh, politician here is doing this. Uh, it's yeah. pretty similar. So, yeah, yeah, it's... yeah, I think it's like kind of a worldwide thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Dubai was more like, here's what's going on today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, because the the news is owned by the government. So it's like, hey, right. everything's yeah. fine. Everything's yeah. fine. Okay. <laughs> be happy. <laughs> We're the happiest country in the planet, right? <laughs> oh, God. We're not going back there again. <laughs> shake, Mo- like, shake Muhammad. I love the country. Take <laughs> you have no idea how many times I went to Kinukunia. <laughs> I mean, they have Kinukunias here. Oh, they do. From, oh, okay. Yeah, there's like there's like five of them across oh, the U.S. Okay, I, I just don't live in the state they're in. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> or when I did live in the state they're in, they're like in cities that are like four hours away from me. I'm like, damn it. Um, <laughs> I remember they had a poll. It's like, where do you want us to like open next? I'm like, please come to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> there um, is a nerd scene here. I'm like, why don't you guys have a location here? Yeah, true. Like, especially with all the conventions and shit. Like, but, yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. we have like five different anime expos. Not like big, you know, big name ones, but mm-hmm. we have them. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm pretty sure it'll be somewhere in Toronto be, that there'll be a Kunikunia, but I never bothered checking, so. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure there has to be some in uh, Canada. Yeah. I'd be very surprised if there isn't. But yeah. yeah, that's always just like, yeah, give me more manga, anime, comic stores. Mm. Uh, you should try maybe because like comic book stores nowadays have manga, so you can try those. I, I've gone to a few comic book stores, and like mm. some of them I go to, they have like a little um, wheel rack, like a spinning rack. It's that a spinning has, rack. Like, yeah. Selected. Yeah viz media titles and it's usually just like jujutsu kaisen volume three demon slayer volume four naruto volume 25 i'm like okay like, i mean if you talk to the owner you could make a pull list for the manga like hey i, I want like i don't know let's say me and roboco um volume and that's digitally only really yeah. you can't get a physical like volume no, it's not, it, 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 for some reason, it, it they for that one they went with a digital only release. Okay, never mind then. Uh, I don't know what else are you into. I don't know, like my oh, look at Oh, oh, so I'm just into me. And Roboco. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're making me into like way more of a me and Roboco. No, I, I forgot. I, I forgot. Like that's okay. the first one. You you could have said Chainsaw Man, <laughs> One Piece, anything. You just went straight to me and Roboco. It's like damn. <laughs> I don't know why. That's like the. Yeah, you're probably like, like YouTube's number one me Roboco <laughs> fan, Mister Funky Punch. I love knees. Uh, I eat the manly man dinner all the time. Um, I, I I don't know why I've associated <laughs> like when I think of me and Roboco, the first thing I go ah Shaheen, <laughs> or vice versa as well. I guess. I, see. I, I can't wait for the, the movie to come out. So, yeah. Oh, hey. Also, the anime finally came out in Crunchyroll, so like I win again. No, oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like he's. You got, you got, I, I get a feeling like the first ticket bought in the U.S. for me and Roboco will be yours. <laughs> <laughs> I bought the whole thing. Like when people when people were doing like all the box office, like the first I don't know whatever, like ten fifteen dollars will be yours. <laughs> <laughs> It's like there, there's a surge of, of tickets being like bought in Las Vegas. <laughs> I bought all the screenings. <laughs> yeah, you could. Okay, anyways, like you could go to them and be like, hey, I like One Piece. I have volumes 
one to ninety, or whatever. you don't, but I'm just like giving an example. Yeah. yeah. Then like, okay, so I need like basically anytime a new volume comes out, can you buy it for me and then call me when you have it? And they could do that for you, honestly. That's what a pool. Oh, they'll actually do that for manga too. They do it for comics, because that's all pull list works for comics. Like, hey, I like this series. Anything new yeah, comes yeah. out. I, I heard that for comics. I wasn't sure yeah. about it. But, like, since they're selling manga, you could try. Like, you know, it was ask see. them and talk to them. Like, hey, I want to pull list. I feel like the, the guy in this fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> comic store for the piece of shit. Like, <laughs> like uh, so, so comic that I'm paying you. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah. Like, if, if they do the, any business sense, you will, like, agree. Or you'll, like, or maybe there may be a logistical reason he can't. But, like, whatever. Like, Hey, like, be like, I want, want, I want to pull this, but only for manga. Can you like do that for me? Because I asked, because I went and asked, like, hey, I want to pull this, but I don't want like floppies, like the individual issues. I want it for trades, and they agreed, like, yeah, sure, we can do it for trades, no problem. Okay, that's yeah, that's pretty good. One of them only gave the condition that, like, you know, because for like a regular pull list for like an individual like floppy, uh, like you know, the twenty-two page comic, like they're like. If it sits in there for a month, that's fine. Just pick it up whenever you're ready. But for trades, it's like, please pick it up within a week. Like, I can't sit... Because it's they're more expensive. So I can't, like, you can't just sit with it in a month. I need you to come pick it up and pay for it immediately. Yeah, like, okay, true. no. Yeah, that's fair. But, like, they all agreed, like, yeah, no, we can do it for trades. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Man, yeah. That... So I'm like, if they could do it for trades, I don't see what they can do it for manga. Yeah. True. I don't know. Maybe I'll ask my local one. Even though mine's yeah. like a bit smaller. The thing is, I don't understand why there isn't more like Kino. I mean, Kino Kunia is like a general bookstore. Yeah, a general exactly. bookstore. You don't, don't, you don't go ask for a pull yeah. list from them. Yeah. 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 No, it's just like, I don't, I, like, I haven't, at least in my experience, uh, among the ones I've been to, hmm. like, there's not that many just manga stores. It's mo- mostly just comic book stores, but I don't know why they can't have a good balance of both. Because, like, most of the comic book stores I go to, they have, like, a shelf of manga. Or a rack of manga. They don't have like as equal amount of comic and manga. It's like Kino, there's a very fair balance of both. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Even like borders, like I've been to a couple borders. I would say it's kind of equal, but I think because manga has like, grown so much over the years, like manga has like, a bit more of a bigger and nicer selection when compared to the comics whereas like the graphic novels are just like stuffed in one shelf and they they're yeah, not as displayed yeah. Got, as pretty m- as the manga m- manga so here's the thing like that uh there's there's this youtube channel called perch he talks about the business side of comics and he mentions that that like more bookstores are like expanding their manga section but like shrinking their like graphic novel section for multiple things number one obviously because like manga sells more so it just like, okay, this is like a hot ticket like product. We need to like display it nicely and expand it so we can get more and make more money. Second of all is that like the size works. Like it just it just perfectly fit night and fit fits nicely on a shelf and it's consistent. Like every manga has that size. So it's easy to stock. Also, like the trade dress, like one, two, three, four. So it's very easy to stock. Whereas with graphic novels, there's no one like universal size everybody just has their own sizes the trade dress maybe matches maybe doesn't you know who knows and obviously the sizes are all over the place so there's nothing consistent so that's why they hate it so like the the literal employees like hate stocking it and then also like they don't sell as much so like you know there are comic books that basically just like live on the shelf for like years and years and years and nobody picks it up unfortunately whereas manga that's a pretty good turnover uh so yeah that's like kind of the sad part uh, which is like kind of the sad part like you know like comic books are cool but like no one's buying them or reading them very few people it's sad yeah yeah like I don't know I always thought it would be cool for a store to have like equal amounts of, of both kind that's of how it like. should that in an ideal world that's how it would be like you know hey both are selling amazingly like, let's do it but like yeah uh, no that's not that's not the world we live in because I'm almost surprised I don't see more straight up manga stores here. I feel like it's usually like I, there's plenty of comic book stores, but I don't I haven't seen anyone just like here's my store where I just sell manga. And maybe a couple comic <laughs> I think I think that's gonna come eventually once manga because manga is still kind of new to like Western. Like I know like it's been around since like what the eighties nineties, it's, but it's only in its current form in I would say like two thousands where like Viz Media is like oh no this is how we're gonna sell the. Like it's in a boom period right now, I see. so there's still like there's yeah there's, there's plenty of stores that will sell you like figures and everything like just 
stores like that. Yeah. Anime figures, but not that many that will just sell you manga or anime. Yeah. So I think that that's coming soon. Like one, like, oh, like, cause like, you know, comic books have been around for like so long. So like, you know, since the forties. So like, it's taken time to evolve and then eventually I've mean, got comic book stores. So manga, I think with eventually with time, especially if it just keeps growing the way it does, uh, then yeah, you'll eventually get like pure manga stores only. Yeah. And, and then you'll get like, like, and then you'll get like manga cafes where there'll, there'll be a little room for you to go in and like read manga. <laughs> right. That's that's always been kind of like something I always like in the back of my head. I'm like, yeah, if I had money, I'd make like a store that has comics and manga. Maybe put a cafe in there. <laughs> um, yeah. Fuck it, you put video games and figures in there. Just make it a really nerdy ass store and like have enough place for people to like hang out in. Um, oh, okay. So then, like, but then. How? Like, I know it's not. It's not probably not going to make money. Uh, yeah, like, there's something like like what do you? Can you rent manga? Can you rent video games? Like what is it like? Uh, no, just know. like a store you could buy it, but like maybe. Oh, just so you can buy it. Oh, okay. yeah, like a like a specialty store. You have all that stuff. I mean, I could have a cafe area where people could like meet up and have like enough space if people wanted to like have like club meetups or like card game tournaments or something they could have it like there ah uh, okay all right all right okay kind of like well, how then... most comic book stores do it like oh hey we're gonna have like an artist meetup or hey we're gonna have like this mm. and come to the a hobby shop basically yeah 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 because but most of the hobby shops like at least the ones i've been to here in vegas and i haven't been to every single one but most of them seem like it's either one or the other it's like either we're all comic books or mm. we're all anime figures Mm-hmm. Um, or raw toys mm-hmm. and they'll have some comics and then like the comics they'll maybe have like one or two manga but like manga's not their thing it's just like comics mm-hmm. I see interesting yeah because the two I've been to here one of them is not even in business anymore which is like sad and also an indicative oh, of yeah Planet Hobby I went through they had comics and Gunpla that's it there was like the two things that were like main into the thing yeah, but that store's not in like pr- there anymore it's a burrito shop now uh <laughs> oh, wow. yeah like exactly. change yeah 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 literally it's like i went there it's like it's empty it's like burrito shop coming soon whatever the burrito is like shop name wait was. was that the one that you went to and the guy didn't really help you out oh no no that was a separate one that was like oh, okay rare comics something like that so i go there store is empty like nobody's there and it's like very like ugly like there's like a stack of boxes in the back and i can see them and shit i'm like oh okay that was comic books and like you know statues and like figures and stuff but like you know comic book figures on anime figures um so i go there i talk to the guy i'm like hey uh where are your trades like where are your collections and stuff and he's like which one i'm like i just not any particular one just a stack and he did it in a very like oh yeah which one like you got a problem like i don't know like he wasn't the You're most. Fr- to me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he had a very, very like, and the tone was not like, and the face was like, like he was very annoying. Yeah, which see. one? Um, and then he's like, oh, we got oh, some here, we got me. some here, we got some there, like literally like, three different places. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, the only one I wanted to buy was that they had the uh, black and white uh, Godzilla Marvel comic. Like it was in black and white because uh, it was like oh. the cheap version. Yeah, I was like, ooh, they're never going to re release that. So, like, maybe i should get (laughs) um yeah uh because godzilla marvel had the godzilla license in the 70s and stuff and they made comics for that yeah and then uh so that was one then the other one was gotham central i went there that was a really cool shop that was they were really nice they were like hey where are your trades like oh they're there there's a whole dedicated section they had a pretty good selection of manga uh really 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 nice that was like okay this is how a store should be even there was a card game section somewhere else like yeah it's like we're selling Yu-Gi-Oh cards and shit uh yeah that, that store was nice i don't know like okay like this is how it's, a store should be like really nice presentable had all of these figures and stuff like yeah like like what the fuck like what was wrong with the other ones <laughs> yeah. i mean there's been a, like one it wasn't necessarily a comic book store it's it, like they have a bunch of locations here in like vegas and then like i guess across the country by now they really expanded it's called like brad's toys and games but ah. it, it's mainly like a toy store and like ah, i don't okay. know why they're like social media it's like all funko pops and like yes they have a big funko pop section and they're constantly doing sales and i see a lot of people walk out with like cubes of them they're just like walking <laughs> out with like eight of them like, why? 
Um, but they have it's like, a collectible toy. So I just fuck with pops. So really fast. Fast. <laughs> They're so I hate them with a pat. Get a Nendroid if you're going to get like a chibi bobblehead. At least that has more personality and character. It's not yeah. just like a template that's like cosplaying as a character. <laughs> um, anyways, mm-hmm. um, yeah. So like. They have like anime figures. They also have like an arcade machine area. They ha- like they have a cool deal. If you give them like ten dollars, you could just get like you could play infinite games for like an hour. Oh, and yeah. um, and it was, like, wait, like, board games, games or like video games? No, video game, like old oh. school arcade games. Like oh, you could old school play, arcade like, games. Okay, yeah, okay. you could play like Mortal Kombat three, Marvel versus Capcom two, uh, Ghost Squad, House of the Dead, Mario, like the arcade Mario Kart. Oh, they have a okay. couple Japanese machines, but like they're all in Japanese, and I have no idea what the fuck they're saying <laughs> or how to play. Um, <laughs> but like, I think that, and they even have like an old school classic favorite of mine, Primal Rage, which was like a it's kind of like Mortal Kombat, but with dinosaurs. Ah, uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had that in there, even though like the screen quality on that one's like really bad. I'm like, I'm not sure if this is how it always looked like, or if this is just an old machine that needs to be refurbished. <laughs> um, but then they also have like a really small comic area. You can also buy like cards, like over the counter and stuff like that. Mm. Really like cool store. Sometimes I just go there to hang out, you know, play games for like ten minutes, and then across the street there's like a boba place that also have game. I don't know that area that I'm in. There's like games everywhere. There's even like a little area that said like coming soon esport training. I'm like, that's really oh weird, wow, okay, okay, cool. Yeah, that's nice. I like. I really like you know like nerdy shops like. And that like you know it's like more than just uh you buy something and you leave like you know it's like oh no you can create like friends and like you know be friendly with the staff and stuff like yeah. the game stores i go to here you can like be friends with the staff and like you know it's like a place to like you know hang out it's not just like you buy your shit and leave and we do, and like that's it there's no other yeah like, i mean i think that's a way mm-hmm. to get especially since you're so niche I feel yeah. like building that connection is what really helps business. And there's just one comic book store I really want to go to here. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called Cemetery Pulp, I think is what it's called. And it's like a weird mix mash. It's a part comic book store, part game store, like like tabletop game store. Ah, okay. And then part like a cult store. So they sell like skulls and crystals and like, uh, oh, oh, okay. Uh, Weird. What do you call it? Right. The animal, like stuffed, an- not stuffed animals, but like taxidermy animals. Yeah, taxidermy like, animals. Cre- yeah, a little creepy for me. Um, <laughs> and apparently they have a lot of events there. Like they'll have like uh, live events. They'll have like, I think one time I was following them on social media. They had like a, like a panel where someone was just talking about vampires on a Friday night. I'm like, <laughs> you know what? That's probably my ideal Friday night. I love <laughs> So I, I definitely got to go there one day. Mm-hmm. Um, even though some of the shit kind of freaks me out because like, they have these things called wet specimens, which I didn't know what that was, but it's like, a, I guess, like a taxidermy animal that's like in a jar? Like a... Yeah. Oh, okay. And, just like, and like, I remember I saw one and they had like a cat. And I'm like, mm, and I have a, like a, we have a cat now <laughs> who I've gotten really attached to. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, that, that's just a little too uncanny for me. I don't know. <laughs> that was like once a living creature and now it's like a decoration like, uh, but sometimes they do that to their own pets that died like some people I know there's like, like I, I, I'm not I'm not into that <laughs> which is because I remember my mom I was telling my mom about that and she's mm-hmm. like well you like uh, there's this one hunting store here that's pretty popular in Vegas it's like the Bass Pro hunting store but mm-hmm. like when you go inside it's really nicely decorated like mm-hmm. it's kind of like, like when you walk in they have all these big statues of animals and it's kind of like decorated like you're walking into a mountain mm-hmm. and they have all these taxidermy animals all over the place and I love going into that store it's really cool mm-hmm. my mom's like you love that store it's the same thing but I'm like it's not presented like it's witchcraft in there. <laughs> the, also, like the owner has a giant boa constrictor that they have as their pet, that just like they walk around with it like it's a scarf. Um, <laughs> I remember I was showing my mom, and mom, mom, like, she kind of likes that stuff, but then she kind of was like, "Oh, I don't like that." They had like a rat taxidermy that was like on a cross. Oh, like, my mom's a little bit more religious, so she's just like, "I, I don't really like that." <laughs> like. Yeah. Yeah. It was like right outside the front door. <laughs> like, I was just thinking, like you go to that vampire, like uh, whatever Friday night, like whatever panel, and you go, like, guys, is it Morbin time or not? 
<laughs> I wonder if that would get me kicked out or not. Yeah, exactly. Uh, or you like tonight? Yeah, it'll be, uh, as you're wearing like a Twilight T-shirt, like <laughs> just to really, t-shirt. like just yeah. to like really like like just be as annoying as possible. <laughs> Do you prefer your vampires like to suck the blood through fangs or like you know through their fingernails like in JoJo? Oh right, yeah, true, true, true. But like, man, the vampire thing didn't really last long in JoJo, so like I don't. <laughs> I remember I was telling a friend that like I had like uh, in high school I had this friend that was kind of gothish, mm-hmm. um, and you know she hated Twilight. I remember I was telling her about JoJo vampires. She's like, that's stupid. Why would they suck blood through their fingernails? Why could they? I'm like. At the time, I just liked JoJo. I'm like, no, JoJo's cooler than stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Sucking blood? That's a, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's better oh. just stab someone with your feet. Uh, <laughs> with your feet. I keep forgetting hands. that, like, jo- that JoJo had something before. Like, I'm okay. Ha- Hamon was still pretty cool, but I'm like, oh yeah, they're technically vampires, right? Right. Like, it's so yeah. Like, I mean, it's like, so, they were it's so far seen. removed from that now. Like, it's like not even funny. <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's a franchise that really like you could. It's it's one of those rare franchises where you could just really see the pieces falling together as, if you like read it from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. how things just evolve. Because like even like I remember when I was reading Yu Gi Oh, like the manga, like when mm-hmm. they first introduced dual monsters, like that first card, it, like it was so primitive compared <laughs> to like Yu Gi Oh has become now. It's mm-hmm. Like oh, my monster is stronger than your monster, and like not even a spell card, a trap card, or whatever. It's just like pulling out monsters fighting each other and then then it became you know the dual disc and how that evolved and then like now you could just duel anywhere you don't have to go up to like a a stadium or whatever so it's Mm -hmm. like really cool but also how like this was all just like a weird children's saw game (laughs) that's how Yu-Gi-Oh was in the beginning and then it just became like yeah cards and then I'm going to save the world and I have a satellite in the sky that will shoot a laser if you lose this card game so you better fucking win (laughs) I mean even with like I don't know other things like Fast and Furious like it started off as like this weird small scale like street racing movie. Now it's like this like blockbuster like that they're like international crime fighter kind of spy people like whatever they are like. <laughs> I, I kind of want to get into Fast Fix. Everyone's like, oh, this is really stupid. But I'm like, it, it, it looks fun. I don't, I don't know. You haven't. I, I I think I told you like and we talked. Yeah, you told it, me you saw. I, eight. I saw eight, and then yeah. I saw Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah, um, which is still weird. Like, I don't know why you went that route, but sure, okay. <laughs> I mean, you know, Mission Impossible, I watched four and then went on from there. I, haven't, I still haven't seen the first three. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Again, I'm not too much of a movie person. Um, I yeah, kind of yeah. want to be, but like, you know, with anime, manga, games, comics, uh, a little, a little hard to like fit movies in. Yeah, no, that makes that that uh, that's that that that's fine. It's like it's going to take time. You you, it's there's a lot. Like I'm not a m- music or video game person, so it's like you know, like everybody oh, has their like that, one. That, that, that's something when people are asking me like, what kind of music you're into. I'm like, uh, oh, uh, Toku openings. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I can't just be like, yeah, I'm into like city pop. with city pop? It's like genre of music from like Japan in the 70s and 80s about. Like, <laughs> Sure, they had, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then he was like, and then they're like, uh, go to sleep. <laughs> <That's their laughs> to... <laughs> oh God! I, then, like, I do like jazz music, but then like, like, like that became a meme because of the B movie. I'm like, no, I do like jazz. <laughs> oh, and then there's like, you know what I think about, right? Like, if I ever meet like a Power Rangers fan, they're like, are you into Power Rangers? There's like, um technically i'm into sentai and i can't think of a way to make that not sound like demeaning <laughs> like <laughs> I, I thought of that too it's like i like what power rangers was based on <laughs> yeah no i'm into sentai <laughs> praise me <bud. laughs> oh god because like not every power rangers person is like into sentai they just watch power rangers and I'm just like, yeah, no, it's like, oh, you like Dino Thunder? Like, no, I like Abba Ranger, you peasant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god. Are you like Mag- Magi Force? I'm like, no, what is it called? Mystic Force. That's the one. I'm like, no, I like Magi Ranger. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Like, Geki Ranger was like Jungle Fury or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Jungle Fury. And then Shikinger was just Samurai, then Super Samurai, I think. Yeah, I don't know why, like, the Power oh, Rangers, they, they sound very aggressive with their names. It's like Mega Force, Cosmic Fury. <laughs> I mean, like, what else are they going to call this? <laughs> I, I know, but they're, like, very angry names. Meanwhile, it's just like, yeah, we're, like, the full power uh, rangers. But then, like, what are the what's the Sentai version? They're like, oh, we're the animal ranger. I got them. They just go, like, very, like, we're the animal rangers with the magical rangers. Yeah. Like, yeah, it, yeah. It's not like force, fury, anger, yeah. rage. <laughs> like... <laughs> we're, they're not so great. I mean, I guess it's also, like... I'm. I, I know you're not that into gaming, but like it, it, I guess it's funny with American marketing because like in uh, oh Kirby, they make Kirby yeah. really angry. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, like man. all all Kirby's always angry in the box art for America. <laughs> like even Spyro, like in Spyro for American box art, he's all cool. But in Japan, they made it like you know he's flying and he's all whimsy and all that. So <laughs> it, it's it's funny how different markets react to that. But I always like how America is like yeah, aggressive force uh, in your face. I think because I think that maybe because like most of the time they're aiming it at boys and boys are like we you know we like shit that fights and stuff. So maybe that's why I don't know. <laughs> uh, true. <laughs> I guess, uh, but I, I just always like how like the Power Rangers are just like it's always very aggressive <laughs> title, <laughs> like Cosmic Fury, because I think yeah. that's like the newest one that's like coming out. I really like to meet a person who's like really into Power Rangers, and then I'm like, oh, so you like do you like Toku, like Sentai, Kamen Rider, and stuff? He's like, nah, man, I only like Power Rangers. I'm like, yeah, but why though? Yeah, that would never left to. <laughs> <But why? laughs> yeah, because like I don't know, like I'm just like one to listen, like because like you're already there technically with Toku, so it's like what's stopping you from like expanding more? Like why are you just in this one bubble of Power Rangers? Like I don't know. Pushes <laughs> up glasses. Why do you watch an inferior product? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not calling it inferior. I never once said inferior. I was like, I was like, why not like you know expand? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, I am curious. Because I've seen some people that that like both. Uh, I am curious. Yeah, which like I, I don't know how you have time for both. Honestly, like to watch two shows. Like that, I mean, right? t- okay, well, to our extent, you know, we watch like practically every Tokusatsu franchise. Um, yeah, but then the, but there's a different like I don't see the same scene again and again, just like with different context or like you know English dub over it. You know, like true. <laughs> well, see, like I don't know. So from my understanding of Power Rangers, it's really just the action scenes. So like I I, I I think they Frankensteined it enough where it is still like a new product. Uh, yeah, I like guess vision. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know it depends really on like from what I've heard. From what I understand, again, I'm not a Power Rangers fan. This is just like hearsay from other friends. Like it depends how much money they're putting into it. Like if they're putting a lot of into it, then like yeah, it's like a different story. You get like unique scenes, unique action. But if it's just like very little money, it's like you're just watching the same scene, like fight scene, like pretty much shot for shot. But it's just like you know, English dub over it with different names because they name the characters differently and stuff. Uh, so yeah, like uh, I don't know, like true. Um, yeah. I think that might have been true for like early Power Rangers, but I think as it went on, they get like a little bit better because like I know they do like original action scenes and sometimes even original suits. Um, yeah, yeah. Jungle Fury has suits that's that's not in Geki Ranger, and I was like, oh wow. I remember I got so confused because I saw some of those suits, and I was waiting for them to appear in Geki Ranger when I was watching it, and then I found mm-hmm. out I was like, no, that was a Power Ranger exclusive. I'm like, oh okay. Oh, oh, recently for me, like if you watch the Maji Ranger Deca Ranger crossover movie, Deca the red Deca Ranger gets a power up that's only in Power Rangers. It's not in the Deca Ranger show. Oh. Uh, so they brought that over. I'm like, huh, interesting. Why? Oh, okay. Yeah. This. <laughs> oh. <sighs> so, yeah, it's, it's really interesting to see, like, how, like, the different franchises interact. But I'd like, really love to know, like, if you're into Power Rangers, like, why it's, you're not, like, into, like, expanding it. Like, you know, I should see the Sentai version, or I should maybe get into Comrade, because Comrade doesn't have an uh, equivalent besides Dragon Knight. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, I, I'm also wondering, like, what are the. Re- oh. Then again, I have reasons why I don't really want to watch Power Rangers. I wonder if it's the same reason for Sentai. Yeah, maybe it could be that. But then you have Common Rider and Ultraman, which is like completely separate. 
So it's like, you know, why not those? Like, I could see, like, oh, yeah, I watch Power Ranger, Kamen Rider, and Ultraman. I'm like, oh, okay, they're fine. I get it. Like, you're not going to pick one of the other between Sentai and Power Ranger. Yeah. True, true. But then you have so many Sentai seasons that Power Rangers hasn't adapted. So, like, what do you do? Yeah. Like, Kira Major doesn't have it. How the fuck are they going to do Gokaiger and that? that? I don't know how. (laughs) Because, like... Because, like, you know, like, Power Rangers doesn't have, like, 45 seasons. True. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, there's always gaps in between Power Ranger seasons or Sentai's. It's like, nah, let's do another one. <laughs> let's keep but on going. I really do hope we get unique Power Ranger stuff from Hasbro. Like, make a unique... Because they're going to make well, a movie. I know Cosmic Fury, they, they showed the suits and, like, their original suits, but they look like ass... Wait, what? Wait, 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 wait. They did? Co- Cosmic Fury is the next, like, Yeah, thing? I think. Because I mean, everyone thought that was going to be, like, the Q-Ranger. Yeah. The was in space. Yeah. Cosmic Fury, Power Ranger. Yeah, what? Like, well, I'm looking at that, too. We we just... <laughs> we should have discussed this before. <laughs> Power well, Rangers, you know, that, that's Power... the flow of natural conversation, baby. Because, <laughs> see, like, their helmets are, like, kind of like Ryu Soldier, which is weird. And then, like the see, I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I'm getting Q Ranger images. On the, this is just, oh no, wait, this is real soldier. Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, this is real soldier. Yeah, like the, the helmet is real soldier, but the actual suits are like original, but they look. Oh, bad. yeah. Okay, what the fuck? Yeah, it's very plain, just a headpiece. And I don't um, know why you'd keep the the, especially since they already did the real soldier season. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that was Dino Fury or Dino Thunder. Yeah, it, uh, Dino Fury. Dino Thunder is old. I remember that was Dino Thunder was from okay. my childhood. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Power of is the upcoming thirtieth, thirtieth season of Power. Oh my god, this is the thirtieth season. Jeez, serving oh, wow, as an so like oh yeah, serving as an adaptation of Kiryu Sentai Ryu Soldier with elements carrying over from Uchu Sentai Q Ranger. Which is funny because like Real Soldier is like like three years ahead of. <laughs> I mean, it's not like you know like that much of a difference. I'm pretty sure it's the same camera quality and all that. But it's funny. yeah, the series commemorates the franchise's 30th anniversary and picks up directly following the end of Dino Fury as the Rangers cha- chase Lord Zed throughout uh, outer He's space. He's still a thing. <laughs> yeah, they had a recently uh, like a once you know that what's that once upon a. A once in a lifetime, whatever. There's a special basically where about like, and it's like I don't know, 20, 30 years later from the first Power Ranger season, and they're all adults and stuff. Huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's still a thing. They're still trying to like milk that first Power Ranger season. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've heard that's like the big thing a lot of Power Ranger fans like. Uh, complain about it's just like I'm tired I guess it's like the same thing like Transformers fans have been going through where they're just like I'm tired of you milking like gen 1 nostalgia oh they're gonna keep because it's like it's they're gonna keep milking that till the end of time like it's it's come back all the way around where like yeah no they just keep doing gen 1 again and again and again which like slightly very with slight variations yeah <laughs> Yeah. Interesting. Okay, Cosmic Fury. They have the Dino thing on it. Oh no, as like I said, it's going to be a mix mash of like Q Ranger and Real Soldier. Okay, Which that's is still an... like a really weird yeah premise for me. Apparently, it only has ten episodes. Silos. They only have ten episodes. Okay, jeez. Uh, let me see. Power Rangers movie. When is that movie coming out? They're making uh, another movie. Yeah, they're making another movie. Yeah. Like, like for the TV show or like a new like. I don't know. Um, it's uh, um, it, it's just going to be a new movie. It's not going to. It's not going to be connected to the 2017 one at all. Uh, oh wait a second! It's a promising update. Okay, reboot is still set to happen despite concerns from fans. It was announced that Jenny Klein, Butcher, and Jessica Jones is attached as showrunner. For Entertainment One's Power Rangers series on Netflix. Oh, okay, this is collaborating with, I don't know who that is, who will oversee the new shared universe. This came, client signed an overall deal for television content with E1. Okay. 
All right. Oh, they're going to make a Power Ranger cinematic universe. Of course. <laughs> yeah. This is Netflix. This is still happening. Development is ongoing. Okay, so it's still going to continue to drive value and remains an important part of the company's portfolio. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because it's, like it's, it's one of the name brands you have. It has no release date yet, though. Yeah. Power Rangers. So it's going to be both a TV show and a movie series. Um, Netflix is rumored to showcase a more serious approach for the reboot series, similar to the Lionsgate 2017 Power Rangers movie. Hmm. Serious approach? Yeah, more serious approach, yeah. In addition, Japan is also expected to play a major part, but it remains to be seen how the country fits in the Power Rangers puzzle. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't know how to feel about that. But, yeah, you know. I just, I listen, I just want unique Power Rangers content because it's like, okay, you're disconnected from the Sentai, you're doing your own thing. I want to see how, di- I want to see something different. That's why, you know? Yeah. True. Yeah. Is there any Power Rangers season you want to watch? Because I'm interested in RPM, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, I think it was like RPM. What was the other one people talk about? It was like RPM and uh, SPD. I hear people talk about that's really yes. good, but I but I saw Deco Ranger, so I'm like, I don't need SPD. I'm fine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that, that's it for for Power Rangers, I guess. I mean, I'd be curious to check out Dragon Knight. Oh really? Oh, okay. I yeah. don't like I don't like Ryuki. Yeah, so I, like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I. I'll be curious to see what they what they uh, did with the concept, mm-hmm. um, which is interesting. It's saying Riku does get a bit darker, so I'm like wondering. <laughs> One of the common writers in that show is essentially a serial killer. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, true. Right, yeah, that one yeah, guy is a serial uh, killer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, which is like a straight up criminal. I, is he going to have that snakeskin jacket or like? What? I mean, he he was definitely cool. <laughs> Cool guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Could you, if you introduced Toku to your anime club, how would they react? I was very close to doing that at one point because mm. I remember um, when I established my anime club was right around the time where Ultraman Ultraman Jeed came out. Mm, okay, and. Mm. I fucking loved that show <laughs> when it first came out because that's yeah. when I was really into Toku. I was in that honeymoon phase of Toku, and mm-hmm. like Jeed was just like I, I could not wait for it to come out every week. I was just like so in love with that show, and I think I talked about it one time mm-hmm. on our the the group chat we had for the club, mm-hmm. and everyone's like, "Oh yeah, I remember watching Ultraman as a kid," because I guess they saw it as a kid yeah there. one of our mutual friends jay even he remembers like oh yeah, i remember seeing this as a kid so i guess india or pakistan had a like ultraman broadcast at some point yeah so mm-hmm. i was just like yeah ultraman it's awesome and i think i was close I, the closest we got to watching toku in the club i think we watched godzilla final wars for like a movie thing we did because mm-hmm. occasionally we would have these like movie days where we'd watch like uh, yeah, uh, that yeah, I, I remember that. But like you know, people I don't know don't know that Godzilla is technically Toku, so they see it as like, oh, just another Godzilla movie. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I guess. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think. Did I actually show them an actual Toku? I think if I was going to show them Toku, I was going to show them Build, which was also something that was recent at the time. Oh yeah, yeah, that was that was my first ever Common Rider show. Yeah. Well, see, I saw Build worked with you. We're like. Well, it works for him. It'll work for the whole thing. I over. tried showing build to my friends. Uh, they hated it. They were like, "What the fuck is this? This looks bad. Like the CGI is bad. This is bad." Even well, at the time, everyone was watching the Flash. <laughs> fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> no, literally. Okay, so you don't know this. So when I went back to UAE, I met up with Reem. Toku somehow came up because people were asking what I was watching, and I was like. Oh, I was watching Toku, and one of my friends who doesn't know Toku is like, "What's that?" Then all the other guys that like, like you know, Reem. Uh, Suraj, Alfred, who've heard of Toku uh, from us, are like, oh my god, please don't explain it. So I was trying to explain it, and then I was like, oh, this is what Toku is, this is what it is, it's like special effects, blah, blah, blah. It's giving you the whole spiel, right? Then Reem butted in and added, it also has really bad CGI. <laughs> that was her one contribution to the explanation. <laughs> 
And I'm like, no well, no, show, show it doesn't. Them show them the show air. See, no CGI. <laughs> Yeah, they were just like, well, that stuck with her, I guess. Yeah, because, like, yeah, they did not like it. When did she see Toku? I don't sure? know. No, I didn't show her anything. I don't know what it is. Like, Because <laughs> remember I tried getting one of our other friends, uh, Murtaza, into it. He's like, yeah, I can't handle bad CGI. I'm like, guys are fucking weak. Guys can't do anything that's, that's outside the norm. Listen, as a, listen just... to be fair, as someone who's watching Beast Wars right now, but it's still like, man, the CGI is horrible. But see, it's all CG. It's, all, <laughs> it's different. At least, like, you know, it's it's a bit different with Toku mm-hmm. where it's like, you still get live action and cool suits and cool action. Yeah, true. That, that I See, I can forgive it. And it's just crazy things. Like, you know, I've never seen, like, an Okaman writer jump down a graph. Like, you know, that, that that looks cool. Like, they're doing fun, like, interesting things with it where I can forgive it. Like, okay, at least it's interesting. It's not just, like, you know, the typical, like, I don't know, like, gray monster, whatever, like, that Hollywood does. And I think also, like, we, we got to be a little bit more kinder to, like, the CG. To- I mean, it's a it's a children's, mainly yeah, children's yeah, tr- TV yeah, show. Yeah, tr- children's TV show that's coming out on a weekly and yearly basis. So, like, you know, give yeah. it some slack. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Especially when a lot of these fuckers give Pokemon slack for like looking like ass every year when a new game comes out. I mean, <laughs> medium. But I'm like, okay, if you can handle those terrible ass graphics, you, you could handle a, a dude going through like a slope when he does a rider kick into yeah. a monster. Okay, but like, uh, let's speculate. Like, okay, you're 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 back in uni, uh, and you have the you have the Toku knowledge that you have now, right? Like, you've seen everything you've seen. Like, like you, let's say you got a time machine, you went back in time. Uh, you killed the old Shaheen for some reason. <laughs> I don't know. Just to get him out of the picture, because both of you can't be in the same room. <laughs> Would that mean I die too? Oh yeah, true. Okay, you kidnap him, drug him, and put him in a cage somewhere separately. Okay. <laughs> okay. You have all the Toku knowledge you have now, and you're like, okay, I need to introduce and to get them into Toku. What's your game plan? Like... Damn, like, some of the ones co- I would have showed them haven't even aired yet. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, that's a problem. Uh, it's like, I can't show them Zero One. Oh, I can't one. show them Zed. <laughs> Those don't exist yet. I have yeah. spoilers. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Okay. Um, you find a magical device. All right. That... <laughs> Future, exactly. <laughs> If I had that, I wouldn't be showing them. I want to see what the hundredth comic is. <laughs> okay, this analogy falls apart way back. Okay, basically, like let's just say you could. Okay, if I could Toku just go back in time. So see, no, no, still... no, no, no. Like you meet up with the anime club, all the members again, and you go back right. to go to a screening room, and you're like, you know what, we're going to do an adult anime club now, and you're trying to introduce them to Toku. <laughs> right. They're so in different countries. So that'll be. Down. <laughs> down. Have a whip in hand. <laughs> oh my Maybe. god, okay. You compare Jeez. this to ta- Power Rangers, it's two lashings. <laughs> it's four lashings. Oh my god. I like it's not even a gun, it's just like a full whip. <laughs> Well, I don't, I, listen, man. I may be, be American, but let's not go that far. <laughs> not just a gun, not just a general, like you know, in general, like bad guys have a gun in this situation. It's so oh, listen, man, I want. I gotta be a little bit unique. Unique, unique. Okay. <laughs> Compared also, I don't to want power. to kill them. I just want to scar them. Oh, I just want to scar them. Okay. <laughs> Um, Power Rangers compared to Power Rangers two. I mean, I don't blame them for comparing to because that's all they know. <laughs> Listen, man, it, it's uh, it, it's twenty twenty three. I feel like a, a enough like low tier YouTubers have made like. Did you know Power Rangers is based on, like everyone knows by now? Um, there's so always someone know. who doesn't, Shaheen. That's the thing, you know. Well, you know what. Two lashings. <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay, all right. You have them down. You have them strapped yeah. in. You have a whip in hand in case you know the, the rules are set. Um, yeah, the rules are set. So, um, what's your game plan? You're going to show them what, or explain to them what? Like, you know, like think of it as a back kind of a back issues episode, right? Like, you have to give them context before. <laughs> so, we'll watch my Tokusatsu introduction videos. <laughs> views up. Um, I'll force them to comment. <laughs> oh my god! Really? If it's a negative comment, fifteen lashings. <laughs> oh my if you don't god! Like and subscribe. It's twenty lashings. Uh, 
Jeez, uh, I like how I've turned into like a horror movie character. Yeah, exactly. I didn't. I didn't. I just said they're in the theater. Like <laughs> the, you brought all the like torture stuff. <laughs> Listen, man, I've been oppressed too long as a fan of Tokusatsu. Oh, that is true. You have you have faced much much worse than me. Yeah, uh, yeah. even not even as a Tokusatsu fan, as an anime fan, to be honest. Like, yeah. <laughs> as a lot of fans, man. Like, I, all all my fandoms have been like judged and mocked, and now they're automatically cool. I'm still waiting for the Toku thing to be cool. Um, <laughs> well, so if if if, if Toei is not going to help me, I might as well do it myself. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I don't know, like, after I give them the introduction and they see my videos and they give me the ad revenue, I hopefully know. Um, (laughs) uh, yeah, I'll make them pull out their phones and watch individually, that way I get all the viewers up. I I don't, I didn't say this for you to become a villain, (laughs) Shane, I don't (laughs) (laughs) Well, I already somehow traveled back in time, I, I must be very serious about this. (laughs) Oh wait, are we still doing the? Be- tra- I'm traveling. No, 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 no! You're not traveling back oh, in time. I they all oh, ma- miraculously, miraculously come to America. Yeah, they all they all come to America, oh. or you go to them. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Like you're basically all in one country in one place. They're like, you know, let's do anime club again. Like, hey, Shaheen, show us something new. Let's do it like the olden days. So okay, you, so you I, rent out I, a theater. I, I, I lose the whip then. <laughs> okay, okay. Now you're back. Yeah, All right, I'm back, I'm back to normal. Um, <laughs> we're, not, we're not in that dark universe. We're not in the dark multiverse. <laughs> uh, so I have the theater. I lock the doors. Oh my god! <laughs> still, <laughs> no, it's not going to be that evil. It just will lock the doors so they can't leave my lecture. <laughs> Prepare a PowerPoint presentation. Talk about Tokusatsu, um, and then I'll, I'll play some. So. You know, if if there were the OG members that stuck around for our Godzilla screenings, I'm like, you guys know Godzilla. He's a Toku character. Mm. So now we're going to the more superheroes. So maybe since they already have that understanding of Godzilla, I'll, I'll, I'll go into Ultraman. Mm, okay. And Would then, you go with Zed, Blazar, like, uh, I don't know, Blazar Taiga? Be, I don't... Yeah, I'm trying to think. We'll, from like, because it would definitely have to be a new generation hero show. I'm not sure if they could handle, like, Oh, yeah, no, no, no. Don't show them, like, I don't know, 60s Ultraman. <laughs> Look at the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let me see here. Because uh, I really like Jeed, but I don't know. See, you watched Jeed too. Were you confused in the in the start? No, I was not. I was completely... Because <clears throat> I watched it, like, I, I jumped around. I saw Jeed, then I saw, like, Orb. Oh, no, I saw Gaiga, then I saw... Ginga, sorry, not Gaiga. Ginga saw Orb. Like, I jumped around. I wasn't confused at all. It was fine. All right, so yeah, I'll probably show them Jeed from Jeed. Um, even though I oh, wait, like... actually, no, wait. Um, I saw the Ultraman Z movie, so I needed to know who Belial was. Because, like, they don't explain who Belial is in the show. See, I was see, like, I was kind of primed for Jeed because there was, like, an episode zero, and I saw episode zero, so it kind of explained everything for me. Ah, uh, okay. No, I'm I saw not the... I'm sure how it is starting, like... I, I, I saw the Ultraman episode. Zero movies, and the movies are good, like, they're really, Yeah, those, really those movies are fantastic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> see, Zet kind of requires some background knowledge, but I think at least for the first episode, you're good. Good. Mm-hmm. Okay, but, like... Okay, so, like, Lockdown, because I have another follow-up question. Lockdown, okay, what are you showing, like, to them? So... For Com- for Ultraman would be Zet for Common mm. Rider because I, I think it has a really strong episode either Build or Zero One. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel those are like moderns with like good first episodes. Maybe I'm leaning more so through Build because I think maybe as a first impression, Arto is not like as likable as a protagonist as Sento. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also with Build, there's more intrigue. It's like oh, there's like world building and Japan split apart in three ways and. Like, mm-hmm. I, I think uh, Sento and Banjo are a really good duo. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. D- definitely very memorable. And mm-hmm. then for Sentai, is difficult because there's a lot of really good ones. But I'm trying to think, um, where would I want to go with Sentai? Uh, maybe just, would I want to do Kira Major? I think Kira Major would be too happy and positive for a lot <laughs> <laughs> for them. Remember, <laughs> uh, some people in that club were pretty edgy. <laughs> in terms of what they like. So Sentai might have been a little too bright and colorful. Or Kira Major might have been a little too. Um, 
Yeah, the same thing as Don Brothers difficult... would definitely lose them with the CG for like the pink and black <laughs> even though I think Don Brothers is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Sentai is a bit more tough because it's a whole team and there's a very basic formula they follow and like you don't really yeah interesting like yeah what would do hmm. also like that's what the Power Rangers pre- comparisons will come in the most because like you know it's literally like you know they've seen the Frankenstein version so like, I see know. maybe maybe mm-hmm. I would put Geki Ranger because then some of them might be familiar with it I'm like this is the OG version mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And that and, way, not everything is like, uh, you know, Reiwa early, late Heisei. Mm-hmm. We got some early Heisei. Oh. So, yeah, maybe that's where I would go for that. And then if we have enough time, show them the camera movies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Like, all right. Now, here's my follow up question. And you have to be honest. What would portions of your anime club honest reactions be? Because then it's not all going to be positive. Let's be honest. There's going to no, be some that are like, that, that, yeah. That, that's why. I Judging to... from your anime, like what the re- the reactions to anime, like you can. <laughs> Due to the fact that I've tried to get them to watch classic, like they couldn't take Fist of the North Star seriously. Some of them. <laughs> they could take JoJo seriously, but not Fist of the North Star. Which is very strange because one is way more sillier than the other. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Maybe it's just. They need modern animation, like they just need it. Well, like JoJo Part One is kind of animated like ass. It's emotional. No, but like, yeah, but like, it, I showed them the Fist of the North Star movie. It was just beautiful. Like, what the fuck? They just, I mean, you can still tell, like, oh, this is made with modern technology. This is made with old stuff. Like, I just, I, I feel like I don't know why they just need it. Uh, and I they, guess I don't know. Like, I was, okay, I was having an argument with a friend of mine about movies. He's like, "I'll never watch a black and white movie." I'm like, "What? But what if it looks better than like even a modern movie?" He's like, "No, still it's black and white." So I think it's just the same way. It's like anything, if it if it's remotely has like '90s or '80s animation, I don't care how good it looks. It's still old ass to me, and I won't be able to take it seriously. This is just, this is just me trying to get into a normie's head. Okay, I don't yeah, have I mean, these views. Yeah, yeah. See, see, that's the thing. I, I think that 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 was the majority of them. If like it was eighties, they just turn off their brains. Don't care how good it was, how inspirational it is. Yeah. It's old, therefore everything it does is stupid. Yes, is that, like, that's remember, that's like, yeah, yeah. Because some of them stayed behind and they enjoyed it, but I remember there was like half of them that walked out, and like this was like when Ken was getting tortured. Like when they were putting this, like the star logo on his chest, like early, oh. North, they were just laughing. Oh, this just looks gay, and then they walk out. How three does it look? Were, th- three of them were JoJo fans. <laughs> <laughs> now that call, it, you call okay, as a JoJo fan, you there, you have no, you have no right to call anything else gay. You have the gayest like show ever. <laughs> um, like, well, because well, you know. Like Shin, who's like Kenshiro's rival, is, is like a big buff dude with like long blonde hair. So I, I guess it's quote unquote gay, and he's fingering his best friend. I don't. But that then, like, a... look at the shit in JoJo: the poses, the outfits, the, the the the. Oh, okay, whatever, man. Sure. That's why I'm just like, okay, these are the type of people I'm dealing with. Also, the fact that they're like that, you know, low leveled mentally, which is like. I'm not gonna watch this because it looks gay. I'm like, okay. And old. Hey, don't forget that. Okay. Don't forget. <laughs> well, they didn't even bring up old. They were just mm-hmm. I think because I, I got not upset, but I'm like, just because it's old doesn't mean it's bad. So I don't think they brought up that argument with me. Oh, okay. Sorry, that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, that'll be interesting now. Like, what's the gayest toku? It has to be Sentai, I guess, because it's Leotard. Like, really I don't right. know. Common Rider can be pretty pretty up there. <laughs> I mean, the whole thing with Bill, but like, <coughs> like why? Tell, t- tell us in the comments, what's the gayest? Ultraman, of the big three, Ultraman, Sentai, or Kamen Rider? Yeah. I, I honestly think it's Kamen Rider. <laughs> There's too many duos of dudes that I'm like, they clearly fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sentai comes close, because there's like this rivalry in Don Brothers, where I'm like, damn. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so like, yeah, so let's go to the reactions now. To like, okay, you show them these three. What are the reactions? Uh, to let's say, uh, you, I was... think there's going to be a couple that just couldn't take it seriously, so they just tuned out. 
Yeah, because like it's just too much like Power Rangers to them. I bet so that they just like tune out. Yeah, it's too Power Rangers. It's too cheesy. The graphics are not good. The costumes apparently don't look as good as whatever Marvel's doing. Uh, I hate that. So that's the one I disagree with hard. I'm like, this looks better than anything Marvel has put. Like, exactly. okay, Iron Iron Man. Uh, okay, Iron Man looks better than this. Wilder Soldier just has a metal arm. There's nothing else really that looks better than it. Um, what, what are the co- Spider-Man costumes? I guess looks better than the Sentai like ones. Spider-Man costumes these days are all CG. It's not even a real. Costume. Oh, it's not even, not even a real costume. Yeah, right. Unless Tom Holland has his masks off, then I think it's a real costume. Or no, that's still I don't CGI. Want Spider-Man without a mask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's the one I hard disagree with. But anyways, like I guarantee you, yeah, there will be some that have that. Uh, There's gonna be people like that. Yeah, uh, some people that'll just be like, it's okay, but it's not really their thing because mm-hmm. uh, they're just not into superheroes. Um, yeah, I could see that. If you're not into superheroes, you're not gonna like this at all. Yeah, yeah. I, like, if you're not into superheroes, I don't think common writers are gonna change your mind on them. Yeah. Wait, did, right. did, did those people then not like? Like my my academia, Dragon Ball, or like probably because like what I used to do mm-hmm. before Anime Club mm-hmm. is for the most part it was an excuse to just because like most of the clubs in our university were like chess club, basketball club. It was like clubs that like went out to go do something that earned some kind of trophy for the university mm-hmm. or drama club. Yeah, and art club was mainly just there for people to kind of decompress and hang out. Mm-hmm. So we would, would play some games and everything, and then towards the end of the meeting, I would download like ten different anime, mm-hmm. um, some that you know I know were good for normies, but you know I would put a couple of my own personal selection in there, <laughs> and uh, we'd like watch like two or three depending on how much time we had because we had to rent out the rooms in the universities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and that's generally how we would do it and you know there's a crowd that was not that interested in the more action side even though i know we marathoned the first season of here academia uh because we had this off week like a study week at university but you could still rent room so like as a cool Uh, hangout we decided to like marathon uh, the first season is like 12 13 episodes right so it's like short as well yeah yeah Yeah. okay Mm -hmm. we just skipped the openings (laughs) <laughs> and then moving on to the next episode. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we saw season one of Here Academia, which, uh, you know, some people uh, had either seen multiple times already. Actually, no, that was before that, because here, that, that was actually the new, I think around that time, um, like season two came out like a couple weeks later after we did that marathon. So a couple oh, people okay. actually got uh, turned on to Here Academia from there. Uh but yeah, I'm trying to think. So yeah, we get a crowd, and then I think there'll be a small amount of people like, oh, I remember this childhood thing, or oh, it's cool. Maybe through Ultraman, it's like, oh, cool, it's giant monsters. And then like, at least with Ultraman Z, there is like a mecha that they use to fight the monsters. So mm. There'd probably be that aspect of it that they think it would be cool. I think there's probably like one or two people I think would actually be into it mm-hmm. uh, once I... I, I sit them down and watch it but that's about it i don't think it was going to really light anyone's world on fire Mm -hmm. at least from the members i had Mm -hmm. um i remember when i left because uh i was going to my master's degree so i stepped down as the president Mm -hmm. uh there were some like newer members that were a little bit more like open-minded surprisingly of course it's like <laughs> and then when I left, the club slowly devolved from anime club, and then it became like a K-pop club as soon as I left, uh, due to multiple changes in management. Um, so that club, because I remember I followed them a bit on Instagram because we had our own Instagram play- page, mm-hmm. and uh, that just turned into uh, I think they are full. Like they they claim that they're an anime club, but I remember all the posts were mainly like K-pop related stuff. So. Uh, it was kind of an end of an era. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that. You were like very annoyed, and there was all this like weird drama and backstabbing that I heard. Like, oh yeah, of- yeah, my club ended with so much drama. It was an anime upon itself. I was backstabbed. <laughs> I was vilified <laughs> for no reason. I had like my supporters. They're like, no, Shaheen is not like this. How dare you desert his name? <laughs> um, meanwhile, I was just trying to get my master's degree <laughs> yeah. Yeah. there was like this whole story arc going around meanwhile i'm just like 
man, I don't really want to work on this group project. Fuck. Um, <laughs> I mean, you're 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 disconnected by then, so like you know they can't do anything. So like, yeah, know, were you? Mm-hmm. We're like and another friend of ours were like telling me some of the drama, and I was just like laughing. I'm like, I'm not even there anymore. Why? Are they about me? <laughs> I'm like, I have like I haven't even dropped. They some mm-hmm. of these people haven't seen me for a full ass year. Why? <laughs> why am I still like living in their mind? Uh, you were that much of an impression. <laughs> yeah, I guess both good and bad. I, I, the, for the bad, I still don't. Actually, you know, I might as well go. Let's see where we are. We're at the hour and a half mark. I might as well transition this into how this anime club came to be. Oh, but first, let's go with like let's let's finish our first topic though. Like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Like, so like, yeah. So some people that are not into superheroes, they would leave the you know, when you lock the door so they can't leave. They just have to sit there and be miserable. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, you have like the crowd that like yeah. just for whatever reason can't get into it they're for, in their eyes the suit looks bad it's too cheesy too power rangery uh so they're not happy what are the other know that, why that's that bad because like power ranger suits were cool too that's why they were popular <laughs> yeah but like there's a you know power rangers because you know you've heard it right oh this is good for power rangers or this villain looks like a power rangers villain like you've heard those. Like, it's just like, oh, Michael Keaton looks. I'm like, oh no, Michael Keaton looks like ass, and then you flash. The flash looks like ass. Like... <laughs> yeah, I I agree with you, man. I agree with you. So. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. All right. So like, yeah. So those are the two. Those are two react. What are the what are the other reactions you would get? Like maybe some specific ones. Like maybe some people would like one or not the other. Like Ultraman but not Common Rider or something. I could see some of them growing like getting more attached to Ultraman considering that they liked Godzilla and like Pacific Rim and all that. So yeah. A little bit more out of like, the kaiju people would like Ultraman basically like the yeah. giant robot, giant monster. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. Like Sentai I think would be the hardest sell because of the Power Ranger connection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kamenero will at least be new, like transforming belt guy. Um, no giant robot, just on the ground fights. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know there's a couple girls that were into like shipping, like yaoi shipping and all that. Oh like, god, we have to cater to that crowd. <laughs> I think they might enjoy Common Rider, especially Bill, because of that. I think oh, I thought you were gonna say double because Philip. Um... Again, like like I'm saying, Common Rider is extremely gay. Like even you can even <laughs> argue like Ag and Ankh and O's. Like there, there's a oh lot of yeah, potential. right. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like. Almost every common writer, you could make that argument that there's enough for like someone to do some kind of a yaoi mm-hmm. uh, fanship for. <laughs> uh, okay, all right, and then yeah, any other reactions you would get? Like, would would, would there be any specific complaints? Because that's what I'm trying to look for. Like the specific complaints, I can see it as just like, oh CGI, oh uh, this is stupid, mm-hmm. it's cheesy. Um, it's low budget. But it's <laughs> mainly the standard reasons why people can't get into Tokyo. Those who have not evolved to truly enjoy art. Um, <laughs> okay. Anything else? Or then you, if not, yeah, that's pretty gonna... much it. Because like yeah. I, I'm trying to think. Because like they kind of enjoyed the Godzilla movie, mm. but I remember some were like, "Oh, Godzilla looks so stupid." And I'm like, even though like that was like one of the better looking Godzilla suits, so I don't know. I like the Heisei Godzilla suit. Like, what's the problem? It looks menacing. It doesn't like if this is about Showa era Godzilla. I'll be like, yeah, okay, it looks like a like a baby. See, yeah. that's the thing. There's some people that, despite a practical effect being real and actually there, there's some people that just can't enjoy a practical effect, a monster, because oh, it looks too much like a puppet or something like that. But they're completely fine with CG. Yeah, yeah, I've I've met plenty of those people. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I remember we were watching, uh, kind of unrelated but slightly. Uh, I was at my cousin's house and we were watching movies, and we were watching the OG Poltergeist. Oh, that's so good! Yeah. yeah, and then I forgot someone mentioned like, "Oh yeah, there was a remake." It's like, "Oh, why didn't we just watch the remake? It probably wouldn't be so cheesy with all these graphics and everything." <laughs> I never saw the Poltergeist remake, but I'm pretty sure it does not look as good as, like, the OG. No. Didn't Spielberg direct the first Poltergeist? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, there's no way. It's... <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's a false 
uh, statement. It is not going to look as good. I, I've i met plenty of those people that are like, why is it a puppet? It should be CGI. I'm like, you know, puppets, like it lasts longer. It's going to stand the test of time because it's actually something there. It's probably better for the actors as well because they can interact with something and not just like a green screen or a stick or whatever. Like, yeah. Uh, uh, hey, you could probably get a better performance out of a puppet versus a uh, a dude in a green suit. <laughs> or yeah. just something that's not even there. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think maybe they just see like I don't know, like I am Groot and Rocket Raccoon. They're like, oh, that applies. That's the standard for everything. Like, no, that's surprisingly the exception. <laughs> uh, like those two are good. I grant you, but like you know, the, not every movie is going to be like that. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and even Guardians of the Galaxy, to extent, there's still people suits. Not everyone's CG. There are a lot. Of, there are plenty of suits in. Oh yeah, like not every yeah. not every like alien or whatever is CG. Yeah, yeah. There's still yeah. people in suits. Yeah, there's, there's still. I mean, in uh, Guardians Three, there's like a whole town of people that are just in suits mm-hmm. that very easily could have been just CGI'd people. Yeah. Um, so I I I don't know. I think it's also because it's like there's still that mentality of it just being like a stupid Japanese kid show. So like, why should I care? Mm-hmm. But I love to be fair, that was my that also was to an extent a Japanese kid show. <laughs> that, that to be fair, that when you first introduced me to Toku in, I think it was the uh, food court of our like university campus. I was like, yeah, this looks damn dumb and lame. But I don't know why. Like, I guess slowly over time, I don't know your propaganda worked. I guess <laughs> it's just like once you give things a chance, like you're 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 bound to like it. I'm I like I I think I wholeheartedly believe that if you're an anime fan, you legit there is some like sort of pathway to becoming an anime fan. How did you becoming how, a Toku? Fan. How did you? I think it's the natural. It's it's the natural evolution. Hmm. Yeah, how did you yeah, convince me? Oh no, I saw your videos. That's how you uh, your videos yeah. genuinely convinced me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. see those videos worked. Uh, they, mm-hmm. they they did their job somewhere, uh, mm-hmm. but like, uh, yeah, there's just oh, you know what? I didn't even mention. Oh, actually, no, Garo would the CG would have turned off too. Much. Oh no, 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 yeah, Garo would have CG would have been turned off. They would probably laugh at like all the naked lady shit and wouldn't take it seriously. Uh, they would probably say it's too edgy. But even though it's like, have you seen Amazon's and Black Sun and I don't know what else Common Rider has done? Uh, the Shin. old, sh- yeah, Shin, the yeah, Common Rider, the old Shin, yeah, the old Shin, yeah, like, I would, like, it's, it's all, like that's edgy. This is like pretty tame. Like it's just like this is a dark world and I'm, I'm just living in it. <laughs> yeah. So I. Trying to think, is there any other Toku franchise? No, that's pretty much it. It's just, I don't know. If uh, we show the sillier ones, it'll never like I don't know, like Dogengers or like Car Ranger or something. Something that's like lean towards comedy or unofficial Sentai Akiba Ranger. Although that's like meant for like Sentai fans. That's too like you won't get the jokes. Yeah, despite maybe. that being my first ever Sentai. Wait, that was your first ever Sentai? <laughs> yeah. I thought Die Ranger was your first ever Sentai. It was my first ever proper Sentai, but like, oh. why did you go with the fish? Uh, it was shorter. The main character was an anime fan, and uh, I don't know. I saw a bunch of screen caps on it. I think on Facebook. Oh, and I'm like that looks like a fun show, and like I was still like really fresh into Toku, so I I, I made that dive, even though I think to like properly get all the references in. Yeah, you need to watch the other Sentai to get the references. <laughs> I'd be very curious now to like rewatch that show um, to see how it fares. But yeah. I remember enjoying it. I had fun with it. Mm-hmm. I mean, to be fair, I have seen people who were like their first ever like Sentai are the anniversary seasons, like Go Kaiger or Mebius for Ultraman. So it's like I don't know. Maybe. But see, those I think I still like help you to get into the franchise. I, you keep a ranger like it, it's kind of like I'm new to anime. I won't watch Gintama. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. You're like, yeah, no, that's not that. Should never you will never get the references ever. <laughs> it's like there's still comedy to be had there. It's not like it's a hundred percent reference humor. Yeah, but you, you will be lost, especially if there's ever like an episode pops up that's like this is a Gundam episode. I'm like, wait, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Did you ever show them Gundam? Because they would hate it. Mm, did I? 
maybe not they would they would like the new ones like iron blooded orphans or something but like not Probably. original not original oh yeah gundam. no yeah. no they they would not be able to take original og gundam seriously yeah um yeah. even though it's like one of the most historic and important anime ever <laughs> oh yeah to hell with that um yeah Funny, I think the only mecha anime I ever showed them was uh, Shin Getter Robo and Mazen Kaiser SKL. <laughs> huh. Yeah, I guess. Hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, you know, Shin Mazen Kaiser, I mean, not Shin Mazen Kaiser, I'm getting them confused now. Mazen mm-hmm. Kaiser SKL got more of a, uh, uh, a response, mostly mm-hmm. positive, but mm-hmm. a lot of them just watched that first episode and that was it. They didn't want to watch the rest. Which I'll admit, the first episode is my favorite, but I'm like, still, I mean, like, there's a whole yeah, but it's like three time. episodes. You could, you can't just like it's, yeah, it's yeah. literally it's not like ten, twelve, whatever. It's like three. Like, come on, buddy, you can rewatch your Academia like five times. <laughs> you can't watch fucking three episodes of a show. Huh. Um, and then Get a Robo. They thought Get a Robo looked dumb. <sighs> that that makes me sad. Which uh, that hurt. Yeah, that that hurts. That hurts. I'm like, that's, the, that, that's the coolest fucking <laughs> mecha design. Oh, actually, I remember I did show them Devilman Crybaby. It was like the last thing I ever showed them. And uh, did they hated it? They thought. Well, see, to be fair, even though I like you, awesome Psych Masaki, and I like Devilman, you know, he's not for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So they thought the show looked really stupid. Mm-hmm. Which okay, mm-hmm. like that one. And then I tried showing them how Devil Man's supposed to look, and they're like, that looks even worse. I'm like, <laughs> not dare besmirch the name of Gona Guy in my presence. <laughs> like, I'm glad this was the last thing I showed you guys. You guys no longer deserve me. If you showed them the 80s OVAs of Devil Man, would they then maybe. Dude, 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 some, I, I told someone about that. Because I told them about Devil Man, and this one person enjoyed. Cry baby, mm-hmm. so I'm like, oh yeah, you definitely gotta watch the OVAs. Mm-hmm. Hey, they come back to me next week. I don't know, man. The animation looked really bad, so I turned it off. I'm like, oh my god, uh, the '80s OVA has some of the best uh, fucking animation ever. Like, what it looks better about? than Cry Baby. Like, that's what it, it, it do- I'm like. How do you be like? Yeah, Cry Baby's fine. OVA, nah. I mean, to be fair, like, okay, this relates to, I mean, I think this has turned to, like, oh, what, the, this is what normies think episode. <laughs> this is, like, the fuck normies podcast. If you're a normie, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think if you're listening to this podcast, you're definitely not a normie. Um, <laughs> or if you are a normie, but you want to, like, you know, not be a normie, welcome. Hello. Watch, you know, everything we've talked about. <laughs> I, I made plenty of, uh, ignore my previous statement. That was for the sake of comedy. I actually love you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I made plenty of introduction videos. And yeah, four like, normies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, four normies. Like I'm trying to be on your side. Like literally, mm-hmm. I introduce things to help you stop being a normie. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so, anyways, like I was with. So I went to watch Indiana Jones Five with my sister and my cousins. Um, so I was just I, I was curious because like none of them have seen Indiana Jones Five except for my sister. But my sister watched them. She was young. She hasn't seen them in like. I don't know, 10, 15 years, right? Um, when, when she wanted to watch Indiana Jones 5 for some reason, even though she barely remembers it. And she's like, oh, no, I just remember watching it as a kid, whatever. So it's like, okay, I guess Disney knows what's what they're doing. It's like, oh, let me just see the thing with the same name. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yep. And so I was curious. I was just asking about oh, what other movies have they seen? What are their thoughts on it? So I was just curious, like, okay, I know what a hardcore nerd thinks about these movies. It's like, what is the regular average Joe person who's disconnected from all of it thinks? And bro, some of the takes I heard, uh, one of them like I really made me so baffled and confused. I asked them, like, did you see the Spider-Verse movies? He's like, uh, yeah, I saw the first one. I didn't see the second one. I, I saw the second one uh, and I turned it off after 10 minutes. It was boring. The guy kept on introducing himself. I'm like, what? Huh? Huh? What? <laughs> like, I didn't Wait, understand. He, he saw the second one and turned it off? Yeah. Okay, so I guess he was watching it illegally. Yeah, he was watching it illegally, which I didn't care about. Uh, but, like, what, what, okay. my, my way of confusion was that, like, he's like, he kept on introducing himself. So after the first 10 minutes, I got annoyed and I turned it off. 
I still don't know what criticism that is because, like, the first ten minutes is pretty much all Spider Gwen. So, like, I don't know. I, I guess what they're trying to get at is every time they introduce a new Spider person, it's like, hey, it's me, mm-hmm. but it's like, it's still a new Spider person. It's not yeah, the same and they do it in a charming, cool way. So I don't know, like, what? Okay. <laughs> It's like, those are some of my favorite moments because it's like, oh, cool. Like, look how unique this is. You get that yeah. int- you're introduced to a new character in a really fun yeah. way. Also, that's like a Spider-Man thing because, like, if you read any Spider-Man comic, he always starts with, like, kind of sort of introducing himself and, like, ah, this is the shit I'm getting into today. Like, yes. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. it's like, I don't know, it's like a comic book thing, too? Which people yeah, it's a comic book thing, too. Days. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's, a gen, it's a genuine comic book thing. You hear the internal monologue of the character. Like, so yeah, I was I like, it's not like a gatekeeper or anything, but there's a lot of people that claim they love comic books, but they really don't. They just like <laughs> modern comic book movies. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, like those are those are the, some of the takes. My sister had really baffling one, which was like, so everyone's compared Indiana Jones five to Star Wars, where you've got like you know in Star Wars you have Luke Skywalker, this one you have Indiana Jones, where they're both old sad guys. They did a lot of bad things in between movies and they're like sad, old and decrepit and grumpy, right? And like they get a new like British female companion with brown hair to like, I don't know, send them on an adventure uh, or like, you know, or eventually take their place, right? And then my sister out of, I, I told my sister that comparison and then she's like, well, yeah, they have to make him old and grumpy. I'm like, why? They're like, no, they don't. They could just make them happy. Like, you know, there are old people that are happy in real life. They don't just become sad when they're old. And it's like, no, but like, you know, something bad has to happen in between movies. I'm like, no, it doesn't. Who told you this? <laughs> like, they could be just like really happy. They're, they're, they, you know, they're, they're married, they have grandchildren or whatever. And now they're just like training the next generation or, or something. Like, at least for Luke, you could have done that, like training the next Jedi. You didn't have to make him like, you know, this old and grumpy person. Like, <laughs> and, like I don't know what that says about your, like, your, your sister's worldview. It's like, yeah, when you go old, you're just depressed. <laughs> I, I don't I, I don't just grumpy you're waiting for death to take you <laughs> I, mean, I feel like that says something about the world views like, yeah, I, I mean to be fair old. she's like you know 20 like she's just turned 20 so like I don't know maybe that's like it's where she is at, at life and that's how she use you know age and you know uh, growing old or something like I don't know but even me as a 25 year old like I'm not that far removed I'm like yeah like, you don't have to make them like this you can like wear the Happy old people, like come on, yeah, <laughs> like a happy old person, yeah. So it's like, yeah, so like I've heard some really weird, uh, like normie takes, like even like I said before, like the black and white uh, guy. I'm like, like, I get it, you, I was there too, but like I've grown past that. I'm like, no, even if it's black and white, it still could be really good and have some interesting camera work and story. Like I watched the original, like you know, Seven Samurai, like it's amazing, uh. like it is long. I think three plus hours, but like it is like it's an incredible epic, and there's so much good in it. And it's like I've seen also like you know uh, Twelve Angry Men, which is like a you know all in one location like jury meeting, or like is this person guilty or not? It's just fascinating. Um, and like yeah, like like you know, or, or like you know, I saw one Hitchcock movie, uh, Psycho. Like it's awesome. Like there's a reason why these things are like because they're classic and timeless. Like <laughs> come on. <laughs> yeah, it's just like I. It's like I don't want to make it seem like, oh yeah, eat your vegetables, kids. You guys have to, like watch the classics and enjoy the classics. But mm-hmm. like the fact that just I feel like it does help, especially that you know there's a lot of people that like you know eventually go out and make reviews and YouTube videos and all that. Like it, it does help to at least have some knowledge of all that. Yeah, if you're just I'm not, a casual I'm not, fan. It's I'm not, like not saying like look, I was in that place too, so like I don't blame you for in that place. And hey, like look, if it's black, if you're like not black and white doesn't look interesting, I'm like okay, fine. You know what? I can't change that. But like that's I'm that I'm okay with, and like, even the CGI people or the anime. I mean, with anime, it's a bit different because, like, a lot of stuff in the 80s looks better than what we have now, but, like, whatever. <laughs> but, like, yeah. th- there's some takes I can find, I can understand. Like, even with Toku, like, now nah, it looks too cheesy and Power Ranger. Like, okay, whatever. Even I had that same thought. Um, but then you have, like, again, like, those, like, takes. Like, oh, they have to be grumpy. Or, like, if, if it's an old, like, character. Or, like, um, what you would call it? Um, Oh, the, 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 I closed Spider-Verse after 10 minutes. I'm like, oh, okay. Jeez. All right. <laughs> yeah, that, that, 
I don't know what to say about that one. Yeah. Or the fact that like they're going to watch an Indiana Jones 5 and they have like they haven't seen any of their Indiana Jones. Like, oh whatever, it's a movie, man, whatever. I'm like because if it was me It's a movie, man. <laughs> like that's yeah. that makes no sense. I don't know. Because like for me, like honestly, for literally the Mission Impossible movie that comes out, I rewatched all the old Mission Impossible movies just so I could be prepared for this new one. And like with Indiana Jones, like, granted, I've seen those movies a hundred times, so I didn't. But again, like I've seen them a hundred times. But like, if I never saw an Indiana Jones movie in my life, right? Um, I would watch the first four Indiana Jones to prepare myself for five. Like that, like that's it obvious to me. Like I have to do that. But like for these people, like nah, who cares? I don't care. Like you want to take Indiana Jones? Fine, fine. I don't care. Whatever. Unfortunately, there's just I feel like there will always be people like that. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, sorry, but like this is just like whatever. This is like normies. Explain your thought process to us, please. <laughs> if yeah, if there is any normies in the, in the in the comments or chat or whatever platform you're listening to this on, yeah. Uh, even though I'm not sure if I get notified about comments on the other platforms. I know for YouTube, definitely. I'm not sure on the other platforms if I get any sort of notification. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll have to see, but yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyways, like, yeah, I think now we could get into like your anime club and how you formed it. So people can get the, you know, anime club begins or origin story. <laughs> you know what? We're already like, an hour 55 minutes and mm-hmm. you know there, there's a lot of lore with that one. Oh, really i thought it was gonna be like oh this is gonna be like a 10 minute story like, no that's... no there, there, there was a club before my club yeah that i remember yeah you mm-hmm. yeah so that that's a little lore intensive might as well just make that the star of a show in the in the next episode of the punch cast plus oh. this, we're, like, i mean we're already at the hour 55 minute mark Okay, I'll go into mine. Like mine's less, much less dramatic. Than right. Yours. Let's go into your anime club. <laughs> yeah. So again, so mine again. People were very apathetic. I tried doing what Shaheen uh, was doing. So for those who don't know, let me just give you a background. Shaheen went to Middlesex University, and I went to Wollongong University. Oh, okay, we're doxing our universities, though. Uh, I mean, do we? <laughs> Like, we... <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. I don't think it's that bad. We're bad. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, like, both of our, both of our universities shared a campus. So that's why, like, you know, we shared like a food court. We shared like basically we were on this like one like area. It's different now, but like back in the day, like that's how it was. We shared a campus essentially, uh, just right. different buildings used for different purposes. Right. So, one of the thing I noticed that like difference between Wollongong and Middlesex. Like Middlesex tend to be very active in extracurricular. Wollongong students. Not really. They're just, uh, I study, I hang out with my friends, and I go home. That's it. Um, so we've we tried, like, for example, there was a tabletop club that my friend made. He tried running it for a while, but after a few weeks, he realized that, like, attendance gets lower and lower. Then eventually, it was just us attending. So he's like, okay, there's no point in this, so he closed it. Now, for the anime club, there was an anime club run by a mutual friend of ours who will not name, <laughs> but, like... Yeah. He wanted to do the same, like, oh, let's screen anime and talk about it. But for some reason, apparently somebody told him that, like, there's certain anime that he can't screen. Like, anything with too much violence, anything that with, like, that's too super hardcore, or anything that's, like, too offensive. And so, like, basically, eventually we came to the realization, like, okay, then basically we can't show anything then. <laughs> Because, like, we can't do anything with fan service, we can't do anything with violence, we can't do anything with this or that. So, like, what can you show? Um, so, this guy was the anime club president for the longest time. And he always gave these excuses, like, yeah, we want to do things, but it's not working out or whatever. Um, then, eventually, uh, somebody else took over. And we thought, like, oh, okay, finally, we're going to have changes. And he's like, yeah, yeah, we're going to do things differently. We're going to. I'm going to do this and that. And we're like, okay, cool. But anime club in our university is going to be something finally. And we can, it'll be comparable to Shaheen's. Um, then we had this one convention, like a university event convention, right? And he made this plan that, hey, we're going to show a Batman a ninja, right? We're going to have snacks and popcorn and everything, right? Number one, the dude was late. Second, there were barely any snacks. I think like he was walking in with the snacks. So, like, for the longest time, it wasn't there. And uh, 
the seats were entirely empty. I think one guy came in, watched like 15 minutes and then walked out. <laughs> so all of us were pissed that like, you said you're going to like actually do something with the anime club. Like, and you did this. So it's like, it's the most low effort shit possible. And like, you weren't even there for it. You came late. There weren't any snacks. Only one guy came. The, so we got really mad. So we eventually convinced that anime club president to step down. And we took over and I got named president since I think I had the most anime knowledge out of, out of anybody. Right? So I'm like, oh, okay. That's how that's what went down. You clearly have more knowledge than <laughs> the president. Yeah. So then I took over and I was trying to do what Shaheen was doing. And again, same problem. People were apathetic. They didn't really care. Uh, and eventually as time moved on, like people stopped attending and tending to the point where, again, it was just the executives which is then like, you don't even have a club anymore. It's just you and your friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, and then I stopped it. So like, I we, I don't know if it closed down. Or I just stepped, I just stepped down as, uh, what do you call it? President and stuff. So yeah, that was me. That was less, much less dramatic. But like, yeah, like for some reason, people just did not care. And uh, any plans I had, like my plan was to like show like, I don't know, like for example, like Gigguk's video on how Mecha anime, like, you know, informed, you know, anime itself and how important it is. And then show like a mecha anime after that. Like, I don't know, like maybe the first Gundam movie or something. Uh, again, it would, who knows? It might be, people might not like it. People might know, but at least they would like walk away learning something and watch something they haven't seen before. Uh, right. Yeah. But like, nope. Uh, nobody was interested. Nobody cared. <laughs> yeah. I tried infusing some anime knowledge, but um, people just wanted to watch anime and have fun. Because like with my club eventually became like a social club where we started getting people that weren't even into anime. <laughs> they were just there to make friends because like our club was like a hundred plus people. <laughs> even though for the meetings we had like generally we ranged from like 10 to 20. Oh, okay. All right. Which, I mean, was... which was good because like, you know, the, the meetings were held in like classrooms. I couldn't fit a hundred people in a, in a, in a classroom. Yeah, yeah, no, we didn't have, we didn't, we didn't, uh, we're like, listing didn't get close to 100, but like, we had gotten best like 5 to 10, and then obviously, that decreased, 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 so it's like, oh my god, so like, eventually we came, me and my friends, we came to the conclusion, like, man, unless it's like a sport, people don't care, like, they just will not care um, about it. Yeah, and like, I don't know, Wollongong people, I don't know, (laughs) there weren't. I, don't know, I I I noticed like at least when I was there they were a bit more I don't guess to themselves. Yeah, there were more to them. That's what I said. Like there was a big extracurricular participation in Middlesex, but like Wollongong just did not have that environment. Even though like our universities are like right next to each other, so like I don't know how we could have two completely opposite cultures. <laughs> yeah, because I remember I went to Wollongong first, and like. Anytime I would go back after class, I, like any time I looked at Middlesex, there was some kind of event happening, or there was like some kind of activity going on in the hallway. Like I always saw it, like when I walked past them, I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, there, there were. Which is funny because all that said, we probably hung out more in Wollongong. <laughs> yeah, true. You always came to our student lounge and we hung out there. Yeah. I think because your student lounge wasn't really that monitored, whereas. You know, Middlesex. Oh, yeah, Middlesex as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a security guard, like, where's your student ID? You know, one time in Wollongong, I, I did get caught, and the guy's like, let me see your ID. Like, he, he wanted my, like, I think student ID. He wanted my actual ID ID. Oh, oh, oh okay. And then I, I, he was going to take a scan of him. Like, what are you scanning it for? What the fuck is wrong with you? And he never did, but like. <laughs> yeah so, which is funny because I, int- I infiltrated your guys's university you guys were like reopening the student lounge it was like an event you guys took a picture of it and posted an instagram and i'm just there <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like there on your promotional work and i'm like i don't even go here i did and i think i even remembered my student id which i wondered if like i sent it to them would it like register <laughs> Or yeah, probably uh, some other kid. Yeah, and Shaheen hung hung out with, especially after he like left the anime club and was doing his masters. He mostly hung out with us. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, because uh, like most of the time, because like you know, all my friends were at university, and like I, I would have like when I, we had our club meetings because you could kind of pick out your classes. The way I efficiently planned out my classes, where I only had to go in like three days a week mm-hmm. for class. 
Yeah. And then like one day where I had no classes is like when I planned all like the club meetings and everything. Mm. So like I, I was mostly at university to hang out with my friends. Mm-hmm. Um, so, which, you know, primarily was most of my experience. Like, I, I feel like that was like 90% of the enjoyment of university was, uh, yeah, I wish we, I wish we had, even with all the complaining and everything, uh, I still wish I had even like half of the enthusiasm your club had, like, you know, cause it like, we were genuinely jealous. Like, why does Shaheen get to have that? And we don't. Like, <laughs> yeah. I guess we, we, our university was just a bit luckier, even though like our student body or, uh, student activities coordinator and person mm-hmm. in charge of like allowing all that was a massive bitch. <laughs> like, absolute. Uh, like, uh, Ooh, that is a story arc for the next pod. Yeah. 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 Like, Trust me. Ooh. No, no. That's what I'm saying. Like mine, there's not much to it. The Shaheen yeah. does a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I'm not like, I may joke around like with the whole whipping thing from earlier, but I'm generally not a violent person, but there was two people through that club that I had the unfortunate luck of meeting that like I generally wish physical harm upon the both of them. <laughs> they really push my buttons. Uh, mm-hmm. the two people. Uh, one of them was a student, another one that actually worked at the university. Um, yeah. Like I, I would, if given the opportunity, I'll probably drop kick them out a window. Um, <laughs> Uh, all right, yeah. So that's that's for next time. So I guess like tune in next time. That's that's yeah, a nice well, cliffhanger to Langlois. Like, who did Shaheen, this lovable boy, hate the most in his life? Yeah. Why? Why, why would he be turned so violent? Yeah. Who is the who is the who is the you okay, know uh, who is the Orochimaru to Shaheen's Naruto? Find out next yeah. time. <laughs> Find out the next time of the, of the episode of Falcon Punch Cast. Yes. Yeah. Um, so anyways, how can punchers as always uh keep keep punching and we'll see you guys <laughs> in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.